d'organisation haute, l'Association provinciale de football de la Colombie-Britannique et le soleil de l'Okanagan ont ouru de présenter la Coupe Football Canada 2022. I would like to begin by acknowledging that we are here on the traditional lands of the Silks Okanagan people. Je désire commencer en reconnaissant que nous sommes aujourd'hui sur le territoire traditionnel des peuples Silks et Okanagan. We respect and honor the treaties that were made on all territories. We acknowledge the harms and mistakes of the past, and we are committed to move forward in partnership with indigenous nations in the spirit of reconciliation and collaboration. Nous respectons et honorons les traités qui ont été signés pour tous les territoires. Nous, nous reconnaissons les torts et les erreurs du passé et nous sommes engagés à aller de l'avant en partenariat avec les nations autochtones dans l'esprit de réconciliation et de collaboration. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Team Alberta led by head coach Darcy Parks. Mesdames et Messieurs, veuillez accueillir l'équipe de l'Alberta, dirigée par l'entraîneur-chef Darcy Parks. Ladies and gentlemen, now please welcome Team British Columbia, led by head coach Corey Philpotts. Mesdames et Messieurs, veuillez accueillir l'équipe de la Colombie-Britannique, dirigée par l'entraîneur-chef Corey Philpotts. At this moment in time, we would like to please welcome our honored guests. Welcome Kelowna Mayor Colin Bazran and host organizing committee chairs Jay Christensen and Lloyd Cogden, as well as the president of the Okanagan Sun Football Club, Les Weiss. We are no invite d'honneur. Accueillons la, le maire de Colonna, Colin, Colin Bazran, et le président du comité d'organisation haute, Jay Christensen et Lloyd Cogden, et le président de la Soleil de l'Okanagan Club de football, Les Weiss. On behalf of the 2022 Football Canada Cup Host Organizing Committee, we would like to welcome visitors to the city of Kelowna. We appreciate the dedication and hard work of each of the athletes here representing their provinces and hope that the spirit of competition and sportsmanship is evident each time you take the field. Au nom du comité d'organisation de la Coupe Football Canada 2022, nous désirons souhaiter la bienvenue aux visiteurs dans la ville de la Colonna. Nous reconnaissons le dévouement et le travail acharné de chacun des athlètes ici qui représentent leur province et nous espérons que l'esprit de compétition et l'esprit sportif soit évident chaque fois que vous sautez sur le terrain. We would now like to call Mayor Buzz, Buzz Run for the ceremonial kickoff. Merci beaucoup, Mayor Bazran. 
The officials for today's game, referee Matt Spetter, umpire Scott Berry, down judge Mark Elsie, line judge Hans Vanderdell, back judge Hassan Cohen, side judge Nigel Bush, and field judge Luke Cote. Now we would like to ask the captains for each team to proceed to center field for the coin toss. Tossing the coin today is for for tonight's game is head referee Matt Spetter. Nous allons maintenant demander au capitaine de chaque équipe à venir au centre du terrain pour le tirage au sort. Gentlemen, welcome to Kelowna. This is the coin we'll be using today. The white CFL logo will be the head. The black LCF logo will be the tail. BC, you're the visiting team. You have choice to call the coin. Who's gonna call it? Call it in the air, please. Heads is called. It is a head. You may take your choice now. You wanna receive. Which end would you like to defend? Stay where you are. BC is going to receive Got your teams. Good luck, gentlemen. And now at this time, please rise for the national anthem as sung by Miss Scarlett Avender. Maintenant, veuillez-vous lever pour le l'interprétation de notre hymne national par Mademoiselle Scarlett Avender. Thank you very much, Mademoiselle Scarlett Avender. Welcome inside the Apple Bowl in beautiful, hot, sunny Kelowna, British Columbia. Ryan Waters and Tyler McLaren alongside as we get set for the final game of the day one of Football Canada Cup here in Kelowna. 31 degrees here at kickoff. It'll be Team BC, the sixth seed, and the host against the number three seeded Team Alberta. It'll be an interesting game, as you can see on your screen. That's Team Alberta. They have the white tops and the blue pants. Team BC going with the BC Lion colors. No shock. Orange tops with the black pants. And Tyler, it's hot. It's going to be very warm throughout the evening. For the big man in the trenches, where I think this game is going to be won or lost, it's going to be tough on some of these big boys. Yeah, I think it's going to be a tough sled for for one for both of these teams for the big boys. So, I think whichever team can can establish the run first and kind of wear the, the defensive line down from the opposite side, they'll probably be able to impose their will as the game progresses. That's what we've kind of seen throughout the days. So, 
I would anticipate both teams will probably try and get the runs the run going and hope that that pays dividends in the fourth quarter. Interesting that you say that because I talked to both head coaches, Corey Philpott, head coach of BC, Darcy Park, head coach of Alberta, and both say the strength of their team is throwing the football. So it would be interesting, and they want to establish that as well. Absolutely. Both these quarterbacks, I, I know for sure on both sides of the ball, they're both quite confident in the quarterbacks that they have. So it could start off that way where, where, the, where it becomes an aerial show and then morph into a running mm. game. But I think both teams are feeling pretty good about both their offenses, whether on the air or on the ground. There's James Keene. He's the kicker for Team Alberta, and we're about to get this game underway. Alberta, the home team, even though we're here in Kelowna, British Columbia. The kickoff will travel in the direction of Arinza. He will take it from his own 15, crosses the 30, has some room to run, the 40, 45, 50, and finally cut from behind. But what a return for Renzo Ron Arinza. And he starts the BC team off in great field position almost from midfield. Great field position for BC to start this game. And the coaches will like that return because what happened there, on the, and you'll see it on the replay here, is very north-south running. Not a lot of jukes and jives. Just get, get make one cut, get yourself upfield, and hopefully you can get beat the kicker, which the kicker made a good tackle there at the end. But excellent field position for BC to start this game. So here comes the BC offense. Owen Sieben is the quarterback. One of, if not the best for his age group in the province of British Columbia. Starts in a shotgun. He's going to throw to open up the ball game. His throw, far sideline, it is thrown incomplete, looking in the direction of Lee Daniel, six foot two receiver out of his reach. It'll be second down. Good call there on first down. Seaver with a good throw. He had time to throw. He picked the right target. Timing was a little bit off on that play, as, as you can see the receiver broke from his pattern there, but the timing was just a little bit off, and that'll bring up second and long for BC. You used to coach on the Team BC side. How long, how much preparation do you get before you come together? They practice a ton of times. It's hard, okay. especially at BC, with being across the whole province and the island and the interior, but these guys practice a whole lot before this event takes place. Sieben rolling. Now he's going to take off. Gets across midfield. Now the 50 in Alberta territory and should have the first down again. It looks like 11 down to the Alberta 45. Good run there by Steven. As soon as he broke outside to his left, I think he was going to run the whole way, but he kind of held the ball in his arm like he was going to throw it. But I think as soon as he got to this point right now, you could see he's kind of look, put, pointing downfield, either to, for a receiver to pick up a block for him or to try to uh, deter the defense and fake that he's going to run the ball. He's a big dude back there. Six he is foot big. four, 185 at a Terry Fox secondary, home of Langley. Uh, and, of course, home of the Langley Rams, the defending Canadian Bull champions in the Junior League. So Sieben back in a shotgun. They're going to hand off this time, trying the left side, and to pick up a couple, will the running back? That is Joe Murphy, local kid out of Vernon. A flag, however, in the BC backfield. I think this is going to be on BC. It might even be for a block below the waist, right on, might have been number 66 on that player. It's a hold, they call it, but right off the left side, you can see Alberta got some pretty good penetration with their defensive line, and all of a sudden, the, the, I believe it was the left tackle there, uh, was able to twirl the defensive player around. There is 66 in the middle of your screen. Uh, there was 65, 65. Brody Monroe is going to be whistled with the infraction, but Sebastian Sebald, he is the six foot seven, 350 pound 66, as you can see right there in the middle of your screen. He's big, a big boy dude. there, He's protecting the quarter. Dude. Stevens black blind, blind side too. So first and 20 from the Alberta 54, just across midfield, Sieben in a shotgun. Early stages opening quarter, 1046 to go in this first frame. Sieben going back to pass. Sieben's going to have it knocked down. Good penetration for Team Alberta. And they do not sure who got the big mitt on it, but it looks like 58 dancing around. And I think he got through, busted through the line, and got his big mitt on it. Yeah, I thought Sieben was going to have a passing lane down the field, but, he, but the, the defensive linemen are taught that if you're not going to get to the quarterback when he releases the ball, the next best thing to do is get your hands up. And that's exactly what the Alberta defensive line did there, knocking that pass down and bringing it up. A long situation here for BC. Cyril Atemkeg, the linebacker, is the one that got his hand on it. So second and forever, second and 20 from the Alberta 54. Five receivers for Sieben. Going to drop back to pass. Here comes the pressure. Dumps it off to Murphy. Murphy gets to midfield and tackled there. Not much doing, but there is flags that fly. Tyler Bailey in on the this stop. Might be a rough in the passer against Alberta. Sieben was knocked to the ground right after he threw the ball. I thought it was. It looked like it was okay, but we'll see on the replay. Yeah, he took an extra step, and he gave the quarterback a two-handed uh, shot to the ground. So that's going to get flagged in an effort to protect the quarterback. Mm -hmm. So big gain, big gain there for BC. They'll get an extra first down on that one and move the sticks. Connor Critch is the one that got through and knocked down Sieben. 
And now the ball all the way back into Alberta territory at the 38-yard line. So it will be, that's a first down too, isn't it? Yeah, automatic, yeah, automatic first, down. first down for UR. So from the 38, it'll be first and 10. Boy, BC dodged a bullet there after a second and 20. Yeah, the screenplay they called got them some positive yards, but obviously not enough for the first down. So penalty will help BC. Empty backfield. He's going to roll to his right side. Stop. Look around. Great blocking. Great coverage, however, downfield. Seaman nowhere to go, and yeah, he'll dump it off. But was it intercepted? If it was, that's a heck of a play there. It, it was like picked it was. off. Intercepted by Team Alberta. Aiden Sendecki gets the interception. And Alberta will take over. Not a good decision by Seaman at all, all sorts of time. Yeah, that's that's one word, and you took the words right out of my mouth there. Seaman in that particular case, he had all kinds of time. If he couldn't have found somebody, the best thing to do in that case is tuck it or throw the ball away where it's going to be an incomplete and you live to play another down. This yeah. is a case of a guy trying to do too much. He's throwing off his back foot. He's just trying to lob it to the closest orange jersey, and that's a mistake early by Seaman. How about the one-handed interception, though? It's a heck of a play. linebacker. Alberta going to throw as their opening drive. The quarterback is going to head towards the sideline, get out of bounds. That is Page. Josh Page, the starter, 5'10", 185, out of Spruce Grove, Alberta. And he picks up a pretty good gain, a gain of eight, maybe seven. It'll be second and short. Good decision there to, to pull that ball. That was a, what they call a run-pass option or RPO. So the quarterback in that case is eyeballing the defensive end, and you could see him. He was staring right at number 78 for BC. As soon as he flattened out down the line of scrimmage, it was a pull situation for the Q. Around the corner, he went for a good gain on first down. RPO, I like that. Yeah, I, we, learned a few, we learned a few tricks along the way. <laughs> That's your coaching days. That's coming, the coaching right? days, yes, many moons ago. <laughs> Whistle on the play. I'm not sure what the referees are chatting about. Maybe the football wasn't exactly in the spot where the linesman wanted it. They had official. Not sure the warning there, but pointing at both teams. I think he's ready to go now. Second and, well, they're going to call it second and three. Page and a shotgun. We're at number four for Alberta. One man in the backfield. Page will hand it to him, however, whistles and flags fly just before they hand off to Trey East. Both teams pointing in their opposite directions, of course, on that play, so it's well, it likely will be against the offense unless they felt the defense came across and made contact with the with the uh, offensive lineman. But I'm assuming this will be a, yeah, the receiver on the near side should be what's called. So it should be an offside against Alberta from what we could see on our replay screen here. Malcolm Fraser in the middle on Team BC pointing over. It's, it's over there, it's over there, it's over there. <laughs> Even though everybody else had stopped. And it is against Alberta. 11, well, the receiver on this near side, so. That'll make the, the second down a little bit longer now. So now you're going to be looking at second and seven or eight instead of a second and two or three. So a, an untimely penalty for the for the Alberta receiver there as he was just a little over anxious on and the snap. I'd imagine we'll see some of this. I don't believe they played a high school season, did they? No, yeah. no. So, they, I mean, there's going to be a lot of jitters between yeah. these two teams and a lot of probably early mistakes where people are trying to do too much. It's been a while from the, since they've been hit, block somebody. As Page is going to roll to his right side, looking downfield. Now he'll take it under his arm, gets to the 50, gets a first down, hit at the midfield stripe, bounces off a tackler, and then gets an extra five yards and gets to the BC 50. Great run there by Page. As soon as he caught the corner there, I knew he would have enough for a first down. He was able to make a couple more guys miss, and you'll see it right here. He's got nothing but green grass in front of it, tucks the ball in his right hand, get, makes one man miss there, and was able to get a few extra yards with his feet there. Good job by Page for Alberta. Left Sandoon is in the dust. Bounced off him and got another five yards. They'll mark it at the BC 51. First and 10, 8.31 to go in the opening quarter. No score between Alberta and BC. Page in a shotgun east in the backfield. They'll fake it to east. He's going to roll to his right wheel page looking for a receiver, and he's got one. A sliding catch by Clazy. And it's a first down. Ethan Clazy with a nice sliding catch. Great catch there by Clazy as he just sat down right in the zone, found a spot, a soft spot where the defenders weren't there. Great job there, recognition of where he was, and Page was able to find him there for yet another first down for Alberta. Coach Darcy Park on the Alberta side told me he is their big play player, and he picks up a first down on a nice reception, his first of the evening. So first and 10 from the BC 50, pardon me, 42. I'll make that the 38. I relied on the scoreboard, Tyler. I will try not to do that again. <laughs> they hand it here to Clazy on the end around. Clazy looking for room to run, and he's met just over the line of scrimmage. Good pursuit by a big number 77. That's Axel Sutton for the BC side. 
Good flow here, as you can see, Alberta's trying to run the jet sweep from right to left. And the key thing here is the runner has to be able to get his shoulders turned to be able to head towards the end zone. And BC did a really good job of stretching that play out, not letting him turn his shoulders, keeping the gain to minimal, maybe a yard on the play. Yeah, I'd say no yards on the play. So yeah, second, very minimal. Yeah, second and how about nine and a half? I'll we'll go with nine difference. and a half. All right. Second and nine and a half for Page in the offense of Alberta. Empty backfield. We saw this before, and Page took off. He's going to have to run here as he flushed out of the pocket. However, sacked behind the line of scrimmage. Nicely done. Max Ganey from KSS in Kelowna with the sack, but maybe a little extra celebration, pushing and shoving a flag flies, and we'll see what the call is. This is going to be a, a penalty that will make one of the head coaches in this game not very happy because yeah. that's, that's a situation where if it's against BC, I anticipate Coach Philpott won't be overly happy for celebration. They seem to be marking it off. So this is a situation where I don't think Coach Philpott will be overly happy. Ganey with the great pursuit off the end. There's the... It's against Ganey as well. And Ganey immediately comes out of the ball game as well, and he's going to get an earful from the coaching staff. Yeah, it's, 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 it's tough because you're, you want to be excited, you want to feel good, you want to cheer yourself, cheer with your buddies, but you have to keep yourself under control and obviously not do that in the face of anybody else. So it'll be still third down because it's only a 10-yard penalty for objectionable conduct. So Alberta was looking at it, trying to figure out down distance, maybe thought about a field goal depending on how confident they are in their kicker, although it would be probably about a 43-yarder. But looks like they'll bring out the punt team, try and hem BC deep. The punter. For Team Alberta is Samuel Bowen out of Sherwood Park, standing at the BC 50. A couple of returners standing back deep for Team BC. And the kick is uh, going to end up in the BC bench. And yeah, not a good kick there. That won't even wouldn't have traveled enough for the first down. So that's a that's a missed opportunity for Alberta to pin BC deep, especially with field position like that. BC escapes a little bit on that one with the, the short kick and will actually have decent field position at the 32. And, and a shout out to Sibad who made the pretty reception. Good, pretty good catch yeah. on the sideline. Come on, six foot seven, 350 pound offensive lineman made the nice grab. And the big guys don't get to touch the ball very often. <laughs> so even if it's on the sidelines after the play, it's still a, still a good thing for the big boys. <laughs> exactly. 6.36 to go, opening quarter, no score. BC and Alberta. Teams three and six in this one. They're going to pitch it to the running back, try the right side. He's going to get the corner, gets the first down, and more pushed out of bounds is Hudson Bromley. His first carry out of Surrey, and first down yards for Bromley. Great run there by Bromley as he got the corner. We'll probably see a good block here. I didn't see the receiver number on the far side, but he made a heck of a block right there as you just see that the tail end of it there. I think it was number 19. Yeah. And if he doesn't make that block, that's probably maybe a four or five yard gain. But as soon as he was able to make that block, that gave Bromley the corner and enough for the first down. Yapo Conte with a nice block there and Chilliwack. So first and 10 from the BC 45. And back. In a shotgun once again is the quarterback, Sieben. Bromley in the backfield, and they'll hand it right back to him. Why not? Bromley will try the right side, but Alberta was ready for it. First man through the line was the defensive lineman, Ashton Hope. He started the tackle, and then he had some help to finish him off, but his second and looks like nine as he picked up a yard. Yeah, good play there by Hope as he just kind of knifed through there right across the face of the BC offensive line, made a nice tackle. I think what BC is probably watching that one too is there might be an opportunity for Sieben to pull the ball on a play maybe down the road or later on in this game as the defensive end didn't really honor Sieben running the ball. Sieben again in a shotgun, Bromley in the backfield. Sieben going to look for an open man on the far side. The catch is made by the receiver, Oregard, but it looks like he'll be short of the first down. First time Tyson Oregard has made a reception here today. He's going to be close enough where I think if he is short, I think it's going to be a go for Coach Philpott. It is going to be a first down on the play, Ooh. so that's a good thing. I thought he got a pretty good spot on that particular play, but... The, it was a good timing route by BC, and they were able to move the sticks. And that's a that's a play where if you don't get the first down, you're, the, the receivers are taught to yeah. always run long enough to get the when you're coming back to the ball, make sure you have enough for the first down. And that was the case for BC. Ooh, I don't know. That is a generous, a generous spot. spot. Though, yeah, at the Alberta 54, first and 10, 4:42 to go, opening quarter. He's been in a shotgun. Bromley's going to depart, and they hand off to the fullback, who will go right up the middle. That's Conte who was a receiver earlier, had a nice block, but he was in the backfield there. 
And he gets a pretty good gain of game about six yards. Good run off first down by Conte, just straightforward north south. Nothing fancy about this one. Just want to get hats on the guy if you're BC, the offensive line, get your hats on the Alberta guys and try and move the line of scrimmage back. They were able to do it, and that's good gain on first down. Ball at the 48 of Alberta. First, pardon me, second, and looks like about four. And they're going to go back to the air. Seaman, quick drop, his throw, and nice catch by Ogard. Looked like a little bit behind him. He made the reception, and the referee's going to give him a nice spot at the 45, but it'll be four short of the first down. This looks to be a little bit short from where I see his foot is from my, I'm not sure if my eagle eyes are as good as they were anymore, but from what <laughs> I can tell, it's on the far side of the field. This looks to be a little bit short, and we got a injured Alberta player down here, so that'll give the referees some time to measure this one and have a look at it. That's Ashton Hope again, who made a nice tackle a couple of plays ago. Six feet, 265 out of Edmonton. Harry Ainley, one of the Titans on this Alberta program. There's a lot of Harry Ainley Titans on this program. I don't know too much about their football program, but I know in basketball, boys basketball, they are outstanding. Are they? Okay, in I didn't Edmonton. know that. Yeah. Excellent. At least they were. Usually basketball players make good football players too, or vice versa, so. I don't know if, if Ashton would be a f basketball player. He'd be a low post guy. He'd be a low post guy. Yeah, he's no he's not a point guard. No, he wouldn't be hitting the Rainmakers <laughs> from outside. <laughs> Although if he could hit the Rainmakers, he'd be unstoppable. He would be unstoppable. unstoppable. The Team BC is huddling up. It's been an interesting day of football to open up this Canada Cup. If you look at the scores, there's been three shutouts today. Team Ontario beat Team Manitoba 36 nothing at 10 o'clock local time this morning. And the old air horn has decided to fire away here at the Apple Bowl. Not sure why. Quebec, Team Quebec, who is a silver medalist from 2019, beat Team New Brunswick 57-0. And Team Saskatchewan, the defending champions, a 40-0 victory over Nova Scotia today. And that's a good sign that Ashton Hope is walking off under his own power. I don't know if the trainer would be able to help anyway. <laughs> they might have had to send some reinforcements out there to... <laughs> He's a big man, and it looks pretty good so far in this game. So third down, and after the coaching staff had a chance to look at the play and look where the ball spot, they're going to send in the backup quarterback in Lucas Fever with third and inches. Fever, let's see if he keeps it. He does. He'll just fall forward. BC with a nice push, and he should have enough for a first down. Both sides point in the other direction as if they're taking control of the ball, but he didn't need a first whole down. lot there, and I would say that's a first down for BC, and it is, so just needed to basically move the nose of the football or half the football, and BC was able to do it and keep this drive going. It's funny, you take out the six foot four quarterback, put in the five foot nine quarterback, and want to get him, give him the opportunity it's to get funny, the Funny, some inch. of those guys are better. They're just, once they get under center, it's different taking the handoff yeah. as opposed to sitting in shotgun, so. Good job by BC there. So the ball at the 44 now, first and 10, toss to Bromley. He's going to try the left side this time. Bromley gets to the 40, picks up a block, and he'll be brought down at about the 37-yard line. As getting up off the turf is Ethan Casey, who made the tackle. Yeah, Casey didn't make that tackle. There was an opportunity there for Bromley to get a big gain on that play. Still is a pretty good game by six yards on this one, but you can see there, Casey didn't make that tackle. He might have been still running. That's a... There might have been some green grass yeah. ahead of him. Carter Smith, my apologies, not Casey. Casey's an offensive player. It's tough sometimes to see those sixes it and is those really fives. Hard. Carter Smith wearing number five. Casey wearing number six. Back to pass on a second down wide open. Receiver makes the reception still on his feet. That's Michael. And he'll be brought down by a couple of different Alberta players, but that is the first time we've seen Colton Michael with the reception. He's a big boy too, six foot four, two ten. Yeah, big receiver there, big target. I like the I like the call by BC. They're just sitting down in the soft zones there. Very good timing there. Seaven zips it in there. That BC seems the throws they've seen. Seaven's been bang on, with the exception of the first of the interception that he threw earlier in the in this game. But a lot of timing routes that Seaven has been spot on so far today. First and ten. BC starting to get a little closer. The hand here to Bromley, right up the gut. Bromley, horse collar tackle. And now a flag flies in at the last second. But boy, oh boy, that got him right around the neck or the helmet. And he brought him down. Yeah, big gain there by, by Bromley. And their, the offensive line there really opened up a big hole. And we're going to see it on the replay here. Is that was that was a hole that it, a lot of people could have ran through that one. But you'll see the, the, the right at the end there, right up high, it twisted him around, turned him. So... Referee threw a flag on that one, so we'll see what they call on this one, but I anticipate it could be a horse collar call against Alberta. Bradley Rodden with the tackle there. He's a big guy too, 6'5 and 280 out of Camrose. But you never like to see that, and I don't think it was intentional. 
just some in the heat of the moment going up there to try to bring down a ball carrier and you get him around the Absolutely. head. Absolutely. Like he was he's a defensive lineman. He's trying to come up not come back, make a tackle on a back on a back that's past the first level of the defense and and coaches like to see that kind of stuff because that shows you're not giving up on the play. And mm -hmm. when the big guys can turn around and make a tackle, that's always a good sign that they're hustling and playing, playing each play to the end. But that's probably just being a little bit overzealous on that one. Now the referees talk things over. The winner of this game going to play Team Saskatchewan tomorrow. There's the unnecessary reference call. A 15 yarder and a first down, which will set up BC inside, I believe, the five yard line. It'll be first and goal. From about the what three, the two, the or two, three, two, or the one looks like is where yeah, I was going to say it's either the two or the one. There's some shadows down there on the field, but to me it looks like around the maybe it's the one. It's the one and a little bit. Yeah, the nose of the football touching the one yard line. So BC will probably we'll see. I didn't see if they they've got Sieben still in the game, yep. so I thought they might go back to their third third and short yardage oh. team that we just saw previously, but. They'll stay with Steven in the shotgun here. I love to see the jumbo package down in this area. Put a big offensive lineman back there. Let him carry it in. They, so love, they love that one. That happens. Yeah. First and goal. Steven's going to go back to throw. He's going to roll to the left side. Steven trying for the corner of the end zone. Touchdown. Great play by Steven there. Just using his legs. And on that particular one, that's a run all the way. That I believe that they, like he had, didn't seem to have a whole lot of intent to pass the ball. And really all he had to do was beat one man. As they spread, as BC spread the entire offense out, ran a spread formation, and basically it's mano a mano. And in that case, Steven was able to make a play. And you can see here as he comes out to his left, he's not really anticipating yeah. trying to throw this ball. There's the one defender he's got to be, beat, and he is, and he can walk into the end zone. So BC strikes first in this football game. Again, the winner moves on to face the defending champion, Team Saskatchewan, tomorrow. And we'll wait the extra point attempt for Team BC, and we'll finally have an official score after a few minutes, or at least after the first quarter here. Marcus Jones is the kicker, and it's up and through, and it's 7-0 BC with 1.31 to go in this opening quarter. Good start by BC. They took advantage of some good field position. Again, I think their offense now settled down on that second possession that they had. Steven made a, made a, made a, obviously made the error on the interception on the first one, but looked a lot better on that particular drive. Had some really strong throws, timing routes. The timing looked better, and I think as the game goes on, both teams will kind of settle in and make those plays where sometimes in the first quarter, the first series or two, the teams are excited. Their their, their timing's a little bit off. It's their first game in a while. They're playing in front of their friends and family. There's a Big crowd here at the Apple Bowl watching this game with BC being the host team. So I expect both teams to settle down and we're going to see a good football game. Yeah, I'm glad you said they haven't seen live action for a while because, well, I, I know in BC they haven't played for a couple of years. I don't know about Alberta if they've played high school football or not. Yeah, some of these, I know BC's played some high school, but it's still been a long time and they, and, they, and they're and they practicing and everything else. But there's, it's it, now that all the live bullets are happening. So it's where you get to hit somebody in a different color uniform and so on. It gets tiring after a while hitting your buddies in practice. So <laughs> so I'm sure both teams will be happy to uh, to play against somebody else and play against somebody in, in a different color uniform. So Jones will tee it up after the touchdown at the 45. And with his yellow helmet, will kick it in the direction of Falconer. And he'll get it at his own 10-yard line. Here comes Falconer. First time he's touched the football, runs into his own man, and will be brought down at around the 27-yard line. Not a bad return if you're at Darcy Park and the Alberta coaching staff. You want to see that ball a little bit further down the field, but that's where the offense will take over. Yeah, good downfield coverage by BC on that one. I thought the Alberta the, the blockers kind of fell off their guys a little sooner than I'm sure the Alberta coaches would like, so they'll probably look to clean that up on a future return. But good downfield coverage by BC as a swarm of orange uniforms were able to tackle, tackle them on that play, and that'll bring Alberta up inside their own 30-yard line. Josh Page, the quarterback, will uh, head back into a shotgun. He's got Trey East in the backfield. Look for Clazy. He's wearing number six for the Alberta squad. As Coach Park says that he's their playmaker. They give it to East, however, and runs right into the arms of the waiting defender, Rocco Williams, a local guy out of Kelowna. Makes the hit and pushes back east the ball carrier for looks like maybe a loss of one. Yeah, nice play there by Rocco, on number 44 for BC. As you'll see, there again, they're trying to see what happened there. He decides to hand the ball off. He was just able to shed his block pretty quickly, make a nice play, and minimal again, gain if any on first down. So second and long. We'll call it second and 10 from the 30-yard line. 
Page in a shotgun, empty backfield. Page back to pass. Page is going to run for his life as the coverage breaks down. A flag flies. Going to be a holding call, I think, in the Alberta backfield. And then a second flag comes in the far sideline. Yeah, it's probably a holding call, the one to our left in the backfield, like you said. And it might be a legal contact on a receiver down in that area just inside the 50-yard line. So this might be offsetting penalties and replay the down. Great rush by BC, though, able to push the offensive line back. The tackler did grab the quarterback from the from the caller. It's possibly that's the call as well. They're talking to both teams, so that it could be explaining a foul on each one. We'll see. Otherwise, usually it's just talking to one team. Alberta looks to be moving backwards now, but it might be a case where they're backing up five and replaying the down. Or, but the referees are talking to both teams, so that might be a one against each. Might be a situation like that. Here comes the official to give us the official word. So first down, Alberta. Interesting, he called 77 BC. That's Axel, Axel Statton. He was in the Alberta backfield That's and hustled all the way back to grab the quarterback. And where, he, where the flag was thrown, it was in the defensive secondary. So I'm surprised that that's who called it in, in that spot. Yeah. Maybe they got the run number wrong. From the 35 now, Page go back to pass. A pass completed. That's Clazy. Reception falls down right at the 40. Short gain of five. It'll be second and five. Good safe play by Alberta there to Clazy, Page to Clazy. That's a that a play like that is it's it's timing, but Clazy just curled in there. It's almost it's pitch and catch for guys at this level, and they can make that play all the time. But it's it's almost like a running play that if you don't want to run the ball, that's the next closest thing to it. Is a short, quick pass, high percentage play. That sets up a manageable second down for Alberta. This will be the final play of the first quarter. Second and five from the Alberta 45. Might make that the 40. My apologies. Back to uh, in the shotgun is Page. Page looking for the quick strike, then brings it down, takes off. Page will get the first down, bounces off a tackler, gains a couple more yards. I like the heart by Page. That's the second time he's bounced off a tackler and got positive yardage. Yeah, he was not. I mean, I, it might have been tough for him to see. That's the end of the first quarter. It might have been tough for him to see where the first down markers were, but kudos to him where he wasn't trying to slide or he wasn't trying Whoa. to go down. He was he was thinking, i got to get an extra yard. I might need an extra half yard, whatever, and he could see him there. He lo lowers his left shoulder, puts a pop into the BC defender, gets the first down, moves the sticks for his team. And sorry, Sean Sadu, but that's the second time you've been <laughs> the quarterback's bounced off him. Yeah, and you know what? Like the Alberta bench was really excited for that yeah. one. They, the guys like to see that, especially when, especially a quarterback who's supposed to be a leader of the team when they're making plays like that and putting themselves at risk and and, and taking a hit or giving a hit. That's what the t that's what fires up the benches and, and gets people excited. That's a great point. So end of the first quarter, seven nothing BC with the lead, and there is a little bit of home field advantage here with BC being in Kelowna. And you can see the shadows on your screen are covering the BC bench. Those poor guys from Alberta are still, in, still in the sun, sun a little and bit. That sunshine. And yeah, there's a little bit of home field advantage. But BC if you will, will say Alberta's got the white uniforms, whereas BC's are the darker orange. Okay, so right. there's usually the gamesmanship right. within a game. And <laughs> I'd take the shadows, though. I would take the shadows. <laughs> it's, you know, I would take the shadows. It was pretty funny. Well, before the one of the games earlier today, we saw both opposing coaches standing watching a game that was on the field before. And I thought to myself, very rarely do you see co two coaching staff standing side by side, five from each staff. And the reason they were doing that, because they were in the shade. And I said, <laughs> shade has a way of, of bringing people together, even when it's even if they're supposed to be uh, enemies on the field and yeah. wanting to beat one another. That just that just brought them together, where yeah. they were standing shoulder to shoulder. That's funny. There's the good crowd here at the Apple Bowl as well. The grandstand, which is right underneath us, on your screen, you can see some of the bleachers that are on the far side of the field. Nobody is sitting over there because it's a thousand degrees over there. Yeah, if you're sitting over there, you're <laughs> baking like a cake over on that side on the metal bleachers. So and that's you're not well liked. <laughs> so first and 10, Alberta from their own 48 yard line. They're gonna hand it here to East. East will go right up the middle, bounce off a couple of tacklers and get a nice gain. Get him about five for Trey East. It'll be second and five. Good misdirection play by Alberta there. They're going to try and establish a running game beyond just Page, and that was a good run on first down. So they're starting to hopefully they're tilt the field in their favor as they're getting close to midfield. But just a simple misdirection play here. You can see the, the receiver come across the formation and hand off, and good first, good first down gained by Alberta. East who attends uh, St. Joseph 
St. Joseph in Alberta in uh, Grand Prairie. Tier two provincial champions. I've been told they're the best small school in Canada. I don't know what signifies Maybe a numbers, small school, school numbers. Yeah. Sure. Didn't think it was actual building size. <laughs> <laughs> that pass goes incomplete, but a flag. Two of them in the backfield as a BC player was pancaked in the back. I don't know if the quarterback was hit. Well, we'll see what the call B is from BC the official. BC was coming with the blitz on that play, so they had a lot of pressure on the play. Page makes it seem like he's going to be staying on the field, so they he probably thinks it's a rough in the passer call against BC. So as they're moving the, we'll see what the call here is here by the officials, but it might be rough in the passer against yeah. BC. Yeah, good call, Tyler. So that's Vincent Braunauer, the kid out of Chilliwack, who uh, commits the foul. And look at those uh, lines people. They are driving all the sticks all the way down to the BC 41-yard line, and that's where Alberta will take over. Costly penalty by BC as they were going to get Alberta off the field and have their punt team come on. But Alberta now is knocking at the door at the BC 41 with a fresh set of downs. First and 10. Page in a shotgun. Two running backs behind him, including East. And they'll hand it to East. There's a fumble. Page will jump on it, but a BC player rips it out of his hand. We'll see what the official call is from the official, Malcolm Fraser. It's the Alberta ball. They'll give the benefit of the doubt to Page. Wow. But it's close. And see, there's a perfect example where he's trying to ride this handoff. You can see him put it in here, and he's trying to ride it as long as he can because he may pull that particular play. So that's the downside is... The running back is wondering, "Am I going to? Are you going to give it to me, or are you going to pull it and, and, and run with it yourself from a quarterback?" So that could play can happen at the at the highest levels. Is is that just a, a play where you're trying to get the timing right and figuring out if you're going to hand it off or pull it? Loss of four, so it'll be second and fourteen from the forty-five of Alberta. Page empty backfield. Here comes BC. Flags fly. Page is going to have to take off. Bounces off a tackler, and then he's going to not go much further after that. I think this is going to be offside against BC. They are coming with a blitz from their left-hand side, Alberta's right. I think there was a little bit of overzealousness on the BC side as they were coming with a blitz. So I think Alberta's going to get another down here uh, five yards closer, if my eyes are correct. That's another shot in the foot, though, if you're BC. You had them uh, held. Again, again, a penalty. Here's the official call. No. Half of the official call. It's the microphone not entirely working here at the Apple Bowl. Yeah, offside against BC, and look, you're, you're spot on right, Ryan. That's the second time they've had them where they've been looking at a third down situation, yeah. bringing their punt team on the field, and now Alberta gets another crack. This time it's obviously not going to give them a first down. It's going to create a second still long, but it's giving an extra down, and coaches will mm -hmm. say those are the times that sometimes it can come back to bite you. Second and nine from the BC 40. Page in a shotgun, empty backfield again. BC going to rush four. Page going to air it out. Sideline for crazy or Clazy who makes the reception, but he's out, out of, of bounds. bounds. Yeah, and it'll be third down. Yeah, no doubt about that one. Good catch there. Tried to change Falconer, his body. Sorry. Tried to change his body position there and be able to come down with it, but did everything he could to keep his feet in bounds. But even if he did come down with that one, he was a, couple, a yard or two out of bounds on the play. Jordan Falconer, 5'11 out of Calgary. Nice catch, just... Too far to bounce. And what I like about that is it's, it, 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 Alberta will think it's going to hopefully stretch the BC defense out. So that's the first time anyone's really taken a shot down the field with vertical routes. So that's that's a play that you might not see the dividends particularly right now. Late substitution by BC. They might have too many men perhaps. Don't think that could be okay. But, but that's a play that could come back later in the game. Here's the kick from Alberta that's going to go right up the middle. Take a bounce, and then Oregard has it, goes backwards, now tries to go forwards. A great coverage by Alberta, knocking Oregard back to his five yard line. There's a flag that does fly at the end of that return. Let's it's see what the, the call is. It's in the neighborhood of where a hold or an illegal block would be against BC. As Oregard there is trying to dance and get whatever he can. And sometimes when you're when you're trying to go left, right, forward, and back, you, you, you cause problems for your blockers. They don't know necessarily where you're going, and sometimes that leads to an illegal block or a hold. Here's the official's announcement. Yep. Good call, Tyler. Yeah, it's really hard on the returners because they think you're going a certain way, and then all of a sudden, if you're a returner and you, you're zigging and zagging and going left and right, sometimes you're going, oh, I didn't think you were going that way, and your hands just go outside of the, mm. the area where you're supposed to be blocking people, and it's a, it's a tough one to take because you're just trying to help your return guy out. So tough field position for Team BC at their own three-yard line. 
And Sieben will go back out there as the quarterback in a shotgun standing in his own end zone with Bromley in the backfield. He's going to go back to pass is Sieben. Now he'll be flushed from the pocket, runs to his right, has a man downfield. Oregard who almost makes a great catch. Nice coverage by Team Alberta. That was Moenda on the coverage. Yeah, good cover there by Moemba, and he's he was made a really nice defensive play, and, and you can see if we do see it on the replay here, is he's got his back to the to the receiver when this is thrown, and good DBs are taught that don't put your hands up because you're going to get caught for a screening, but when the receiver puts his hands up and his eyes light up as wide as can be, that means the ball's probably coming, and that's a mm -hmm. well-timed play by Moemba to get his hands in there and make that an incomplete pass. So second and ten from their own three. Sieben in a shotgun. Here comes the blitz. Sieben steps up. He is going to be sacked, or did he throw? He might have fumbled the football. We'll see what the call is from the official. I'm thinking they're going to call a safety here if he wasn't out of the end zone. If he is out of the end zone, I think they're going to say he was down on the one. If he is in the end zone, because we can't tell from our vantage point, this will likely be a safety in my opinion, but we'll see what but the referees he, are talking. Because he, he looked to be down. He lost the football, though. We'll see. Like, here they, might, they might have said he was stopped here. So he's definitely in the end zone. So they're either going to oh, probably call this. I would say they're going to call this an incomplete pass, which BC will then have to bring out the punt team and give up. So either way, this is going to be a safety for Alberta because if it's an incomplete pass, BC is going to take a knee and give them a safety. Right. Or if they said Steven was down, it's going to be a safety for Alberta either way. I don't think they're going to call a fumble here. I'd be surprised. But I think this... After they talk all this out, there's going to be two points on the board for Alberta one way or another. Here comes the official. is Walker Rate. He's number 44 coming in on your screen to put the pressure on. He doesn't give up on the play, and then he's got some help. So there was, pe there was penalty flags on the play on yeah. the far side. I didn't see that flag. So that was offside that they called. So this is going to be third and be well, third and lo extremely long. BC is going to end up taking a knee here. Alberta will get their two points. Looks like a mess down there right now. It was Aaron Parker, though, that did come up with the football after potentially what, a fumble. And that's what play? Alberta, because you could tell Alberta players and the coaches are on on the field as well looking for that to be coming our way. Now Alberta's hoping they're going to get a safety call, which they're going to get either way. It's just a matter of BC takes an E or the right. referees give them it. Right. Now it looks like they're going to give them the safety call after all. Okay, so after all that, Alberta does get on the board with a safety and it should be 7-2 if I'm not correct. Here's the official. Yeah, so as soon as you ground it in the end zone, that's what's gonna get them the, 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 the safety because they're gonna say he was dead in, or dead in the ball, the ball, the play was over in the end zone. So after all that, it was safety, but that's the thing is even if they would have called him like the, the BC was going to give up a give up the safety sure, either yeah. way, so it's. I'm good, glad you could translate what the referee was saying. Because <laughs> so, I don't, I didn't catch every word, but you came away with it. Nice going. Yes. So now BC will have the election of having Alberta kick to them, or they can have the ball on, I believe, the 40-yard line. So it looks like they're going to have. BC's going to kick it. Alberta's going to end up kicking it. Don't they get the ball back because it was a safety? They, BC's going to end up with the ball. I don't know. This no, is they got Jones out there. Excuse to me. No, the Alberta. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. So Alberta is going to get the ball. Sorry. So Alberta could have chose to take the ball on their 40 or have BC kick it off. So they're electing to have BC kick the ball. So they should get good field position as well on this one. Clazy and Falcon are back deep for Team Alberta. And we'll see who Jones elects to kick it to. And as they whistle it in. So at 8.35, remaining first half, 7-2 BC with the lead. Getting a touchdown in the first quarter, now giving up this safety moments ago. Gonna kick it right up the middle, it'll be Clazy at his own 21 yard line, here he comes. Clazy sets up the triangle, he comes right up the middle, on touch, hit midfield, flags fly. Clazy to the 30, to the 25, and he'll be brought down inside the 20, but there's a flag back at midfield. We'll see what the call is from the this official. One, this one's gonna come back against Alberta, holding call. And, and that's the downside. BC, as soon as that ball was kicked, and Clazy's obviously a heck of an athlete and a returner, the one thing that BC, and, and I'm sure that Coach Philpott and the BC staff will try and clean up is don't kick the ball right down the middle of the field. Yes. It just gives too many options for the returners to go. And you can see where this is caught. Clazy catches us basically right in the middle of the field. Dangerous returner like that's going to make plays all the time. And you can see the holding right at the end of your, on the screen there, it's just passing by. 
that's the holding call against Alberta. So that will negate a good return by Clazy, but Alberta should still get decent field position. I don't think he was touched either going no, through that pile of bodies. And that's the danger. And he, as soon as he started going north-south, make one move and go, that was going to be a, a good outcome for Alberta, minus obviously the holding penalty. Yeah. So Alberta will get the ball at their own 35. First and 10, 8.33 to go, opening half of what is a scorcher, even though it is coming up on the 8 o'clock hour. It's a warm night here in Kelowna, day one of the Football Canada Cup. Page in the offense back out to work. They hand to East. East will try the right side, and he'll gain, it looks like they'll give him five yards. It'll be second and five. And a pretty manageable second down for Alberta coming up. Yeah, good. They're having success running off the right-hand side there. And you can see this. This is just a straight handoff with a lead by the by the, by the the other back there. Good good run there on first down. Teams will take second and five all the time. That's a manageable down and distance for offenses. So they still have the whole playbook at their option, whether they want to run, pass, short pass, extended, vertical. So lots of options in the, in the uh, arsenal here for the Al Team Alberta. Stratton was the man that brought him down. So second and five. Page again in a shotgun. Five receivers set, three to his right, with East in the backfield. Now he'll depart. He gets the snap. It's a high one. Now he'll roll to his left side. Page now going to tuck it under his arm. Hits the 40. The 45 makes a move. The 50 dives forward to about the 52, maybe the 53. Good run by the quarterback. Great run there by Page. And again, he comes out to his left, and he's he knows he's got a couple D linemen chasing him. And no disrespect to the BC defensive lineman, that's a matchup that Alberta will take all the time. As you can see, Page gets the corner there, and he's got a couple big boys chasing him. And Page is just is a good athlete. As soon as he gets the corner and gets the position on him, he's going to get that make that play all the time. No stranger to big football games. Page won a provincial title in Pee Wee in, in 2017 and Bantam in 2019. And here he is starting for Team Alberta in the Canada Cup. Empty backfield again. Page. Straight run. He'll take off in the quarterback draw. Gets across midfield and down to about the BC 53. Good run there again by Page. That looked almost like a designated draw by them. It's, it's he looked to be running the whole time, just spread everything out and run. And you got to think as it's, as this game progresses, if Page is going to continue to run the ball as the referees huddle up here. But if Page it continues to run the ball with a success, BC might put a spy on him, which basically means they're watching where he goes to try and take away the quarterback from running. So We'll watch to see if Page continues to have success with his feet. But then that opens up the passing Then game. that takes a guy out of your pass defense, yep. absolutely. No infraction. No infraction. It's nice. it's nice when that happens, when the officials pick up the laundry. Which always, I always thought, even as a coach, I thought to myself, if there was no flag on the play, then why even throw it in the first place? But obviously they've talked about it and they've yeah. got the play right, so they're feeling better about it. So Which is what matters. You which is get what matters, get the play right. right. So at the 52 of BC, it'll be second and five for Team Alberta. Page again in the backfield. Has a shotgun. And right behind him, or it was, is East. He'll leave the backfield. On a second and five, Page is going to be flushed out. Page is going to be get a, away from Williams. However, there's a flags on the play. This one is going to be caught. And still on his feet is the receiver, Cleverez. But I believe this is going to come back on potentially a hold. Yeah, I'm thinking this is going to be coming back, and Alberta's not going to be happy with this one. It's in the vicinity of a hold, and the Alberta players are headed towards... Oh, it's a face oh. mask. Wow. Wow, it's in the direction. So that'll tack on 15 more wow. yards. So we'll see it on the replay there. We just caught the tail end of it. So I thought it was in the vicinity of where a hold would be. But obviously the referees it, saw a face mask. It looked like Rock Williams, who was 44, busting through the line, was going to get to the quarterback, and he was held up. Well, that's right. Somehow I thought he, he got a face mask on somebody. Yeah. So I'm not sure if he maybe grabbed it to get by the by the offensive player, and that's what made him come come through so quickly. But obviously a big break for Alberta is that looked after the big catch play there by Alberta, and it looked to be coming back. Now they're going to get those yards plus another yeah. 15. Civiteres was the one that made the reception and then a couple of moves, and now with the penalty, it's all the way down to the BC 16-yard line. First and 10 for Team Alberta. Page, he's going to hand it here, and right into the waiting arms of big number 75, Malcolm Fraser. There was Ramirez on the carry and ran right in to the big man. Nice play there by Fraser there as he just put up a brick wall and said not today. 
and he beat his man. This is one of the first times I've seen Alberto run to the left with a back, and he could see he's just waiting. Oh, yeah. Fraser's got his arms saying, hi, nice to meet you. So that's a minimal gain, if any, on the play. And that's the first time, like I said, they tried to run with a back to the left. They've, most of their runs have been to come front to, headed to the right, so we'll keep our eye on that. Maybe they're running away from big number 75. He's out of Victoria, and he is a big dude. Six foot one, 300 pounds is Malcolm Fraser. They're going to hand it here. Civiteras, he will make a move, get inside the 10. Not enough for a first down. It doesn't appear from our vantage point, but we'll see where the officials spot it. No, I think he's going to, as they unpile up some of the bodies down there, I think he's going to be short on the play. Coach Park will have a decision on his hands, I think, from where our vantage point is here at the yeah. Apple Bowl. But good run there on the jet sweep there for Alberta. Cut up nicely there. And we're going to see what the, uh, I can't tell if it's, they're, are they, are they bringing out a measurement or just saying it's third down? It looks like it'll be third and half a yard where the official on the sideline is, but it's tough to see where the ball is being placed. You can see the official running around, and it does look like a third down, third in inches. As the shadows start to come on the field from the players and on just the natural shadows from the trees, it gets harder to see where things are, but it looks to be third in inches, and Alberta's decided to go. And why not? 438 remaining in this opening half. Page for the first time gonna go up under the center. Page calls his own number, tries Whoa. the right side. It looks like he has He should enough. have, a, but BC, if we get a chance to see on the replay here, BC, and it might have been big number 75 there again. Yeah. He got tremendous penetration there on that play, and I thought Page might be going backwards. Page was able to what look to take a couple steps, take a quick step to his right and get enough for the first down, but that was very close to being a big play for the BC defense. Staten and Fraser, two big defensive linemen, were right there getting that presentation that you were talking about. So first and goal from the five. And Page will go back into his comfortable spot of the shotgun. East standing behind him. Five receivers set for Page, now an empty backfield. Page, to look to his left, he's just going to run. Page gets back to the line of scrimmage, reaches for the... End zone, Ooh, touchdown! I thought he was a little bit short there, but the officials give him the benefit of the doubt with Page extending his arms there. Good run by Page again. He emptied out his backfield. The defensive line end for BC game got trapped coming on the inside of the tackle. Page was able to loop around that, get enough for the, for the touchdown, and give Alberta the lead. There is number four. Right in the middle of your screen, he's being fanned by a couple of his teammates. His buddies are giving him the... Giving him the fan treatment as they come over to congratulate them. <laughs> Afternoon or evening like today, you want I, more I of I that. I was going to see if it's somebody <laughs> wanted to come up to the booth to give, them, <laughs> give the broadcasters a fan or two. There's a flag on the play. The point after was good. Probably we'll an offside against likely BC, but two flags. Probably both of them will be offside. BC would be my guess. There's a replay again on Page. Made a couple of nice moves. He dragged a BC defender as well, two of them actually. And it will be against BC, no doubt declined. So the score now, 9-7 in favor of Team Alberta, their first lead of this Canada Cup. Good first half. I kind of expected this back and forth to, between these two teams. This was the game we, that I had circled thinking this was going to be the best one of the day. It is a 3-6 matchup, but that's that doesn't mean a whole lot. BC's at home. Alberta's obviously a perennial p powerhouse in this tournament and a good football team, good football province. But... This was a game that I saw, and I'm sure BC saw this in their home park and here in Kelowna and, and, and knew this was going to be a really good football team, really good football game between two good football teams. I think you can throw those rankings out the window too. That That's based on 2019. That's going back a long way. So yeah. if, at least if it was consecutive years, there'd be some carryover from, from some of those players. But in this case, because of the two missed years, because of COVID, uh, it's yeah. they, it's a whole new crop of players. These guys were 14 and 15 in 2019. <laughs> the last two years of COVID-19. <laughs> the that blip, is. as you saw in the Marvel movies. Yep. Now they kick off in the direction of Oregard. And Good he has kick. to go, yeah, go back to get his own goal line, and here he comes. Gets to the 5, now the 10. Makes a move, the 15. Okay. Got some room to run. The 20, 25. The 30 gets to the 35. And what a great return there by Oregard. Really nice return there by Oligard. And he was, like, as soon as you have to go backwards to field the ball, and he was catching that ball almost over his shoulder on his own goal line at close two, that slows your whole momentum down. You don't even have the opportunity to 
have your forward progress for your forward momentum take you forward. So heck of a return there as there's an Alberta injury on the far side of the field around the 30 yard line. Mm. But good return by BC after that looked to be could have been problematic for Team BC. The injured player is Thomas Mwenda, who made that nice defensive play a couple of series ago. Six foot one out of Harry Ainsley, or Harry Ainley, Ainley uh, from Edmonton. Might just be a cramp, uh, judging by what yeah. he's, where he seems to be grabbing on the far side of the field. So in this temperature, obviously, I, like we mentioned right off the get-go, it's a hot day here at the Apple Bowl. Beautiful day in BC, uh, but the, uh, sometimes not enough water on the bench, and these things happen. So we hope that that's all it is for for the young man and he can make get off the field on his own steam. Well, summer has finally arrived and just for the rest of the country to join us here in Kelowna because it's been wet, it's been cool. It's kind of like Vancouver weather, yes. spring that we had here in Kelowna. Today, however, summer <laughs> arrived in a big way. 33 earlier today, I felt bad for those players that played at one o'clock this afternoon. Even the four o'clock game felt bad for you as the broadcaster yes. up here. Yes, got to give you your we're, props as well. We're not, we're not used, to, we're not programmed. BC, the, the lower mainland heat is a little different than it is up here. So it's uh, this is lovely though. This it's is, nice. This, this is nice. weather. This is great. I'd rather be on the beach to be yeah, perfectly that's true. honest. But. Or sitting by the by the lake. Or <laughs> well, that's where the beach is. Yes, <laughs> it's right on the lake. Unless you're meeting a patio. That patio. That's okay. what I was talking about. All right. Nice well, patio. Yes. And yeah, nothing wrong with that. Although on a Monday. Yeah, that's. We I keep thinking it's weekend here. too. We're watching football yeah. on a Monday, which is obviously a rare thing. Usually, high school games are Fridays, or junior games on Saturdays, type of thing, or community football on Sunday. Yeah. So this is this is a bit of a rarity being a Monday night and an all day affair. Although it is an interesting tournament, the setup you have to get all these games in. So teams are playing Monday and then Thursday and then Sunday. There's not a ton of rest time, There's but they're 17, so they bounce back. They easier bounce than faster you and I, than a couple old guys like us <laughs> up here. We get tired walking up and down the stairs here at the Apple Bowl. First and 10, BC, they'll hand to Murphy. Murphy right up the middle, gets to the 40, breaks a tackle to the 45, and pick up a 10 yards from the kid from Vernon. Flag on the play, looks to be in the direction of holding potentially against BC as they're walking backwards. Great run there by Murphy as he just ran north-south straight ahead. Great gain on the play as he lowered his head, got great yardage, but I think this one's going to come back. Yeah, all for naught, unfortunately, unless they pick up the flag again, but we'll see. That's a tough one too, because that's on number 66, and he's a left tackle for BC. So that was the the play was to his right. By it's not like he that was probably a necessary hold. Yeah. We didn't see the hold up here, but we're assuming the officials got it correct. But that's a tough one if you're if you're BC because it really didn't have any impact on the play being way outside there on the left tackle spot. So first and 20 from their own 25 with 316 remaining, 917 Alberta with the lead. Here on a hot night in Kelowna. It was 31 degrees at opening kickoff. It's cooled off to maybe 30.5. <laughs> and Sieben back in a shotgun again, second and 20 long. So he throws it off to his left side. It's Capo Michael, Connor Michael, from the Kamloops Blazer, or Kamloops Broncos of the BCFC, a league you're very familiar with. Colton, by the way, yeah. not Connor. Colton Michael was played actually played for the Broncos last year, so he had... He had some duty experience in the CJFL in our league with the Broncos. So good gain there by BC. When you're dealing with first to 20, you always want to get some of that yardage back, the holding penalty. So in that case, uh, Colton was able to get about eight yards back there and set up a manageable second in about 12 or so. Referee not sure why he hasn't whistled it in yet, but 2.47 remaining. Three-minute warning probably. And they want to reset the clock to 2.59 rather than 2.47. Everybody wanting to get out of here a little earlier, except for the <laughs> official, apparently. <laughs> so second and, like Tyler said, 12 or 13 from the BC, what looks to be about the 32-yard line. There's the three-minute warning, as you mentioned. And we're ready to play football again. Murphy in the backfield. Now he'll depart. Empty backfield for Sieben. Here comes the pressure. Sieben will sling it out here to Murphy. Murphy makes the first guy miss, but not the second. And he gets back to maybe the original line of scrimmage, which was the 35, and BC will have to kick with a third and 10 in their face. Yeah, that was thrown right at the last minute by Sieben. As if he held on to that ball one second longer, he was going to get hit hard from his backside right there. As you can see, the Alberta defender, smart play there, holding up and not taking a potential roughing the passer call, knowing that his buddies are going to come and swarm to the football and bring out the punt team for BC. So smart play by the Alberta defender on the far side, not taking a rough in the passer call. Lots of time for Alberta to get the ball back and move their way down the field. 2.46 and change, ticking away here at the Apple Bowl. And Clazy and Falconer back deep 
for Team Alberta. Low snap, it's fumbled on the hop by the punter who then falls down and he will pick it up, run backwards and it's an awful loss for BC. A great pickup for Alberta and they'll have first and goal from the 10. I think there's a flag on the there play. There is. Right in front of the Alberta bench, I think. So this could be offside. again. If it's offside against Alberta, that's a unfortunate break, but we'll see what the, it's in the position of somebody being offside, but we'll see what the call is, because if it's not, that's a massive break for Team Alberta. And that, as a puncher, that's your worst nightmare. Yeah, when, the, when that snap comes back and you're thinking to yourself, I can still pick it up, I can still get a kick off, and, and the ball's rolling around at your feet, you feel pressure coming at you, oh, and, yeah. and it's just, yeah, like you said, it can go to, from bad to worse pretty quick. Yeah, your hands are sweaty on a hot day, you can't pick the football up, you think you have it. Well, the officials are talking things over, and they want to talk to one of the captains for BC. But nobody from Alberta in on a conversation, apparently. But that, that's tough, and that never happens at, at midfield. It no, always of happens. Of course, isn't that always, always way? Yeah. yeah, you're right. Yeah. But Never you're thinking, happens. like I'm thinking to myself, if it is outside Alberta, just move the ball up five yards and 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 away we and it's and it'll still be third and seven or something like that. If it's against BC, Alberta's just going to decline it anyway. So like, hmm. I'm not really sure why. What they could potentially be talking about here. The cameras were taking a shot of Corey Philpot, the head coach of Team BC, talking to couple of the members of his coaching staff and some of the players is there's an extended break here. There's the officials talking things over. And one of the officials shaking his head. That's never a good sign. As they talk things over. I'm not sure they could come up here and look at the replay. Yeah. But they got to bring a bottle of water with them. <laughs> <laughs> or a cold beer. <laughs> that wouldn't be bad either. No, that's never a bad idea. Now it looks like the official with the ball is marching his way towards, well, a lot further away from the 10 yard line. Here we go. Ooh. Ooh. So that is, wow. that is a 10 yard penalty. So BC is still going to be short, but that, that will, that will stop the, obviously the bad snap that will negate all of that, of that uh, stuff. So BC will end up still being third and two or third and three, but Big break for BC. Oh, Somebody must break? have said something on that Alberta bench because that's a costly, costly penalty. They oh. were going to be scrimmaging it around the 15 yard oh, line. Oh, he's at the 10. Or that's the 10 really, yeah, line. they would have first and goal at the 10 with 2.30 to go. But instead, the ball will be placed at the BC 43 yard line, and Steven's going to come back out as the quarterback. So this is a risky call by BC here because you're still on your side of midfield. So this is Coach Philpot going to the. Uh, the, the gambling school here to try and get this first down and, and in the shotgun. So we'll see. This could go uh, one or two ways on this play. And whistles blow before the snap. So time out there by Alberta. You mentioned Corey Philpott making the gambling play. What he just saw from his punter, however, maybe this is a better, yep. a better yep. option. And that could be, that could certainly be the case. And Steven, I mean, I would think if they're in the shotgun, I mean, this is, this is, I would think he would probably run this ball. That would be what I would mm. look to do here, even though the shotgun. See if it's a pretty good athlete. He's got, he's shown as he can run the ball. He's got, they could do that. So I, I would think that's where they would go. But it's it just, it's scary when you're in the shotgun on short distance because you know Alberta's probably going to be coming with pressure and you're already five yards or four yards back standing in the shotgun. So yeah. it makes it a, a lot further yeah. of a way to run here to get this first down. We did see that on the goal line. Now the ball was at the one and a half yard line and Sieben did take this shotgun snap and then roll around the corner into the end zone but this is well not considerably further this is now two yards that you need compared to the one and a half yeah and with with this is a risky play here it if is this, yeah if this goes the wrong way for bc you could be setting alberta up for for an opportunity to score more points here before this half so this is a risk this is a risky one and sometimes it's a, you see it in lots of levels where a timeout happens and coaches change their mind so in this case, there doesn't look like anybody's changing their mind on this one, yep. but that can happen sometimes after a timeout when a coach has a minute to, to think about things and to maybe 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 uh, come up with a different plan. So third and two from the BC 43. They got to get to the 45 to get the first down. So Sieben in a shotgun, Murphy behind him. And they'll fake it oh. to Murphy. Sieben is going to hit Meckel. He will get the reception and the first down to the 50-yard line. Gutsy call there, throw in the football. But Colton's a big, Colton Meckel's a good guy, a big guy. So he's a big target. So 
That was a bit of a surprise to see a throw on third down. It's a safe throw. Very safe. And, and yeah. it's to a receiver who's a big guy who, who obviously has got good hands. But gutsy call there by Coach Philpot. Works out his favor. He's able to keep the ball, move the sticks, and, and maybe see if they can get themselves in scoring position. 2-14 and ticking. Remaining in this first half. Ball set up on the left hash. Right at the 50-yard line. First and 10, B.C. Sieben in a shotgun. He's got five receivers to work with, three of them to his right side. Murphy, the lone back in the backfield. They fake to him, a high throw, goes off a defender. Michael tried to get it on a deflection, but it falls incomplete. Over his head originally, off an Alberta defender and almost back to Michael. Yeah, that, that was not a good throw by Steven on that particular play, and, and coaches will always try and say, keep the ball down, get the ball down, and you can see this one just sails on him a little bit. He would like to have this one back. He just, he's, it almost looked like he, because there was an Alberta defender coming in with their yeah. hands up, it almost looked like he was intentionally trying to get the ball over the defender's arms, and that caused the ball to sail. So after seeing it on the replay, that might have been what his, what his uh, objective was there, but that could have been bad for BC. And right where he threw it, the receiver's looking back into the sunshine as well, because it's at the back of the quarterback's uh, where it was back. As Sieben rolls to his right side, Sieben throws incomplete that's off a hop. That's incomplete. That's on the hop. Yeah. PC might try and sell that one as a catch. But oh, you got to do a great job to sell that. That won't be tough. Even th even we could see that one up here. But that's that was a tough one too. I like the call and I like BC getting Sieben out on the run. He's, and he's a right-handed quarterback, so coming to his right, throwing to his right. You can see he looks very comfortable doing this. Throws a good ball. It's almost right in between the two receivers, but he throws the ball in a situation where only his guy is going to make that catch. Yeah. And unfortunately, it was a little bit short. The ball skipped before it was corralled by the BC receiver. But that's what, like, if, if I'm BC, I, I'm looking to do more of that in the second half of this game. Get 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 Steven out rolling around, especially mm. to his right. He's, a, he's an athletic guy. Put things in front of him. Make cut the field in half and let him be an athlete. Third and 10, BC will kick this time with Falconer and Ooh. also that was partially blocked. Clazy in the direction of him, but it rolls out of bounds onto the track of the Apple Bowl. No flags on the play, so Team Alberta and their offense will come back out onto the field of the Apple Bowl at 1.37 to go in this opening half, 9-7. Has it been a defensive game or just a lot of offensive miscues in your opinion? I would say more of a defensive game. Okay. I think both of these teams are not, are not are, have, there's been, they haven't given up the big, big play yet. Except yes. A couple of nice returns, one was called back and that, but... But I think I think somebody is getting set to have a one of those types of plays, one of those big offensive plays where it's a, where down the sidelines or somebody goes vertical or somebody cracks a run. I think I think that's what this game is 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 going to have happen sooner than later. It's a new quarterback in as well. Cole, Cohen Wright has come in to quarterback for Team Alberta, which is surprisingly because Josh Page has been terrific so far. This will be a delay a game against. Oh, it's a procedure. Tough call there as they're just coming out with the possession on first down, so that'll make it first of 15. So one of the big boys flinched up front, so that'll be a five-yard penalty against Alberta. Now Page is on the sideline, and he's in full uniform, helmet on, talking or right behind the coaching staff. I'm surprised that Cohen Wright has gotten an opportunity to come in here. Yeah, so am I. I thought Page, especially with his legs, was doing a pretty good job here. So we'll see We'll see what happens. Maybe there's a certain package that they want that they want the new quarterback to do, so we'll see what happens here. Right in a shotgun, quick drop, and he his strike is to Clazy, who makes the reception, a short gain of maybe two. A couple oh, he, of BC players in on the stop. He got a little bit more than that because they had the five-yard penalty, so that's about oh, a right. seven-yard gain. So good job there by Alberta to get the five-yard procedure penalty back, plus a little bit more, so that now makes it a little bit manageable. I like the call on first down, and now you're still second in about eight or so, but... It's a lot better in second and, f and 15. Yeah. Liberman, by the way, with the tackle. Thanks for picking me up on that one. No worries, partner. I got you. All right. It's going to remain in the game. He is in a shotgun. Standing behind him is Ramirez. Right. Going to fling it over here to Ramirez. Leaking out of the backfield. Gets to 35. Really runs nice into play. his own man. To the 40, maybe. It'll be short of the first down. Really, really nice defensive play. We'll get a number here if he turns around the other side of us. Right in front of us. That 26 or 28, with his hands on his hips at the 40 yard line, 45 yard line. Nice defensive play. We'll see if we can get a replay here. You're going to see here the BC defender just gets right off his block right there and then make the tackle number 26. That's a nice defensive play. Chase Nadine out of North Vancouver. 
So third down, what looks to be about two and a half, maybe three yards. Alberta's going to call a timeout. I think they're going to go for it. The 106 remaining. We'll see if Coach Parks is, is feeling in a gambling mood, almost the same situation, just flipped on the other side of the field. So it's almost in the same spot as what BC and Coach Philpot were dealing with er, a little bit earlier. So it, 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 it's in a position on the field where you're kind of going, you don't really want this to go not get it and come back the yeah. other way. It's nice to see two head coaches affiliated with the Canadian Junior Football League as well. Corey Philpott, the head coach of the Langley Rams, we mentioned that earlier, defending Canadian Bowl champions in the CGFL. And Darcy Park is the head coach of the Edmonton Wildcats. Yeah, it's kind of cool. And, and I mean, there's a, I know there's a good flavor of U Sports coaches on the staffs and some high school yeah. guys and that. So it's, it's good to see for sure. Alberta is going to elect to kick. And Crunkham is back deep. A local kid out of Vernon is standing oh. back. And that goes over the head of the kicker. Again, see, it never happens in midfield. He does do get a kick away. That's going to be no yards against BC. Crenshaw, Devin Crenshaw made the reception. How about the kicker, though, able That's to get a kickoff with two defenders <coughs> barreling down on him? Yeah, and that was a heck of a play there. I thought it's going to be actually no yards against Alberta. Yeah. But what I was thinking, as soon as he was going back for that one, you, a lot of times kickers are taught pick the ball up and either run into the end zone or fall down and give up the safety because, I mean, he was getting back, getting close to the 20, 15-yard line, and there's nothing worse than if that were to happen. And you can see how far he's pretty deep by the time he picks this ball up. Yeah, he's and for him to get it away is a pretty good, good accomplishment. Yeah, he's about to 13. That's going to be a 15-yard penalty because it was in the air as well. So BC is going to be in a really good spot here to get some points here before the half. Unfortunate for Alberta as well. I mean, there's nothing the defender can do on that on a play like that and BC's fortunate to not only make the reception but now they get 15 yards yeah. further and all the way down to the Alberta 27. An alert play there by the BC receiver because by him catching and not letting it bounce that's what got the extra 15 yards BC gets with no yards call so alert play by the returner for BC. 56 seconds remaining in the first half. Bromley in the backfield seeming going to roll to his left you just talked about him rolling but this time it goes the other way picks up There's a block a and there'll be a hold the throw is going to be knocked away and incomplete looking for Michael, but there's going to be a hold on the play. It looked like Bromley held his man. Yeah, that was a bit of a tackle by BC, so that will be a hold on them. That'll come back there. Seaman was going to his left on that one. It's harder for a right-handed quarterback to roll to his left because yeah. you really got to throw either across your body, and you can see Seaman was trying right to do there. that. There's the hold right on the top of the screen there, but he does come back, and he looks more comfortable throwing to the right side. Obviously, BC will probably try and have it where he's got more field to work with, so they'll roll him to that side, but he, he definitely is more comfortable, and most right-handed quarterbacks are comfortable rolling to their right. So it should be first and 20. I'm sure well the officials are taking their time here, but 47 seconds remaining in the opening half. The winner will play Team Saskatchewan tomorrow. Now, because BC is at home, they're going to play the 7 o'clock game no matter what tomorrow, whether they're going to play Saskatchewan or New Brunswick, who lost earlier. New Brunswick losing to Team Quebec, 57-0. So we know BC, and I believe you and I are on that call. We are. Tomorrow. We are. So we have this BC team again, whether it's against it's supposed the defending to be a little cooler champion. on Thursday, too. So that's, I don't think we'll be in our jackets or anything, but it will be a couple, <laughs> it'll, be, it'll cool down to 30 degrees instead of 31. <laughs> exactly. Here's finally the call. So those will offset. So it'll be replay the down. And lost it first, first down. down. Yeah. So, so replay again, the down, BC so dodges BC a break dodge, here. They dodge a bullet again. Yeah. I mean, that would have been a first to 20, but obviously somebody said something for Alberta. So that's the second objectionable conduct call against Alberta. One was on the bench, one was somebody on yeah. the field. So. It's Moenda, the defensive back. So first and 10, we do it all over again. And that one is going to be knocked backwards. Good play by Team Alberta, able to get through the line. And it looks like it was 44. Walker Rattay able to knock that one down back into the face of Sieben. Yeah, good play by Rattay again. Sieben's throwing the ball pretty quick when he hits his third step or fifth step, depending on what, what passing play it is. But again, good job by Rattay there to mm -hmm. get your hands up. If, you're, if you can't get to the quarterback, as coaches will say, get your hands up. That's the next best thing, and that, that'll make it incomplete in second and 10 for BC. 47 seconds to go, 9-7 Alberta with the lead. A game that's considerably closer than the first three games that we saw. Three games, three shutouts earlier today here in this Football Canada Cup. 
So Steven back in a shotgun, Bromley behind him. Three receivers to his left, two to his right. And he will look for one of his receivers on the left side, makes the reception, makes a couple of moves, gets to the 20, the 15, look 10, out. 5, touchdown TBC, Noah Brenham. That is a heck of a play by Noah Brenham there. As he, that was all him, that pass. If the Alberta player makes the tackle there, that's going to be a, a third down for BC, but that's a heck of a play as he made a couple man miss, gets into the end zone. That's a great individual effort. BC takes the lead back in this back and forth first half. So Brenham, just the first time he's touched the ball here today out of North Vancouver. Hansworth is his high school, 5'10", 170. Just is that a wide receiver bubble screen? Isn't that what they call that Absolutely. play? Absolutely. And you can see here, Alberta's in a good spot. Brenham makes the first bad miss. Then there's another Alberta player who just leaves his feet, and, and the rest is all Brenham taking it around the corner for the touchdown. Great speed, great wheels to get around. Still waiting for the extra point to come through with 35 seconds to go. All the teams, or both teams seem to be set up. High snap, brings it down, and that Whoa. is just over the crossbar. Oof. How that got over the crossbar, <laughs> I don't know. Wow. BC will take it in the, in the, in the papers tomorrow. That'll be right down the center, <laughs> deep through the back of the end zone. Nobody reads the paper Nobody anymore. Reads. That's true. <laughs> it's all print, it's all print, it's all print. No more print. So four, good job by BC there. Yeah, 14-9, aided by the penalty. Remember the, the objectionable conduct call against the defensive back for Alberta negates that holding call, gives them an extra, an, at least another first down. And on that next play, they score the touchdown, 26-yard yeah, touchdown Couple pass. costly penalties by Alberta. Both of them were objectionable conducts on, on, the, on that last, in the last couple minutes. So that's gonna be something that they focus on and say, let's just, let's just play this game because all it takes is one person to say something and then, then look what you're dealing with. The, the first objectionable conduct on the bench was very costly. Oh, yeah. And that one that you just mentioned as well did not help Alberta on that drive as well. So 35 seconds ago in the opening half, 14-9 BC with the lead in front of a nice crowd here at the Alpha Bowl in Kelowna. As a lot of the field starting to get into those shadows and here comes Jones, his kick in the direction of Clazy. He'll get it at his own 15, and here he comes, right back up the middle. Clazy looking for a blocker or two, tries to squeak through, and it'll be brought down after passing the 30, get to about the 33-yard line, and that's where Alberta will take over, 32 seconds left. Yeah, good return by Clazy there. It looked like he was almost through a bit of a hole here. You can see he catches the ball here, comes right to his left, and it looks like he is, he just gets, that just closes off mm -hmm. just in time. Otherwise, if Clazy gets into the open field, he's a tough guy to bring down, so. So that's a, that's a good break for BC as they were able to mitigate that return by Clazy and Team Alberta. So we'll see what they decide to do here with only 32 seconds left here. If they decide to be aggressive or play it safe here right before the half. Chase Natten, by the way, on the tackle of Clazy. So first and 10, again, right back in the game. It's interesting that... Josh Hart, Page is still yeah. not in, yeah. And now flag flies. Not sure what the play is. Looks like... Procedure uh, again. Yeah. So that'll knock him back. Second pre-snap procedure penalty. Procedure, Alberta, number 70. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Big boys yeah. up front just flinching a little bit. Page and Clazy, the two playmakers for Alberta on the bench behind Coach Park right now. Yeah, and I don't Maybe. think it's just, a, I think it's, like, I'm not sure if they're, they both have their helmets on, so there's yeah. obviously no injury to situation here, but maybe Alberta's just, they're going to just, ease into this half because Clazy's obviously a big play player for them mm -hmm. so I'm surprised he's not on the field. So 27 seconds left right in a shotgun and they'll hand it on the receiver end around gets to the 30 35 now the 40 and that's where he'll be stopped right there is the ball carrier Cleveterres. Alberta's going to go in the hurry up here and again I'm surprised because that tells me they want to be aggressive and maybe see if they can get something here before the half but Pickup of six on the play, it's second and four. Put it at the Alberta 40 yard line. Right in a shotgun. Right, will pass out to Ramirez who makes the reception. Ramirez on a run, gets the first down to Moore. He'll pass the 45, now down to 47. And he'll hustle Will Ramirez. He wants to set up the offense right away. Three seconds to go though. This will be the last play of the, of the half, either way. 
I don't think, I think Alberta was trying to call a timeout and now realizes yep. they don't have any more, I don't think. Or maybe they did have one more. So they did have one more timeout. I thought they were out of timeouts, but either way, this will be the last play of the half and we'll see how aggressive Alberta is here. They got a long way to go, but if you've got a, please, he's gonna come on the field now, but yeah. if you've got a, a trick in your playbook or, or something that you might be able to catch somebody napping, now might be the time to use it. What was that play in Miami, I think against the Patriots? What called it? Oh, I can't remember. Man. It was not the, I, all I can think of is the Music City Miracle, but yeah. that was Tennessee and Buffalo. And Philadelphia had it was one the, where they did the Philly special one year in the Super Bowl. So I remember I remember that one all too well being a Patriots fan. So oh, yes. Oh, and sorry, again, the, my Miami reference was against your Patriots. I apologize. Of course, of course. Did not think of that <laughs> down there. Apologize, apologize. But it was a neat play. The Philly special was a, was actually, I had to give him credit, even though Nick Foles got a touchdown on that one. It didn't help my Patriots out, but that's... <laughs> That's okay. That I, was, I digress. That was like within 10 yards, wasn't that was, it? The that Miami was right the one was down the field, a couple down. of laterals. and yeah, it was Last nice. play of the game, too. Yeah. That's when they say you steal defeat from the clutches of victory. <laughs> 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 so with the field now completely in shadows, four seconds to go. Wright is going to pass it over here. That will be, oh, I was going to say, either caught off the shoe tips or shoe, uh, shoe laces or incomplete, and it was incomplete. That should so that be should do half. it, and it looks like it's going to be halftime here at the Apple Bowl in Kelowna with Team BC in front of Team Alberta by the score of 14 to nine. We'll all step aside and take a bit of a breather and get back with second half action here at the Football Canada Cup in Kelowna. Again, here at halftime, Team BC ahead of Team Alberta, 14 to nine.
Welcome back to Kelowna, British Columbia, and here at the Apple Bowl, the Football Canada Cup. It's Ryan Waters and Tyre McLaren joining you alongside. Thanks for lending us your eyes and your ears on this Monday night, as we thought it was maybe a Saturday. It feels kind of like, like a Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, yeah. Sorry I had to cut Cotton Eye Joe there short, but the, we were rocking out here in the broadcast. Thank God it's not actually the cameras are on us. No, that would be scary yeah. if it was. Yeah. We're, we, have, we have voices for radio only. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's generous. Yes. <laughs> Some first half stats to pass along. Uh, in the first down categories, 10 apiece. Rushing yards, 86 for Alberta, 48 for BC. Passing yards, 74 BC and 59 for Alberta. Josh Page was three of five for 39 yards and Cohen Wright came in, he was three of four for 20 yards. So both offenses, both head coaches telling me prior to the game that they like to pass the football. Well, maybe it's the defense that has been a lot better. Defense has struggled. Defense wins games. Defense wins championships. We'll see what we get in the second half here. Alberta's going to start with the ball. That's Falconer. Picks it up in his own 10. Gets to the 20. Now the 30. 35. And he will be pushed forward to about the 37. Nice return by Falconer to open up this second half. Yeah, good return there by Falconer there. There's a flag on the play, so we'll see what that is. Probably going to be offside on the kickoff based on where they threw that is my guess. But So BC, so Alberta can either... Have them re-kick would be my guess is what the penalty is going to be. Declined. So there you go. So they're happy with the return by Faulkner there. So they'll scrimmage first to 10 from their own 37 and a half or 38 yard line. So Page is coming back as we see him enter the huddle. So I like that call. I thought he he acquitted himself well. He ran the ball well. And I think, I think he gives them the best opportunity from what we saw that based on what he did in the first half. So... Well, good to see him back in the game. We'll see what he does for Team Alberta. Three of five in the first half for 39 yards through the air. Seven carries for 57 on the ground. Starts here in a shotgun. Gives it to East, who goes up the middle. East is going to be met by a couple of BC players and pushed backwards. East in that first half had 12 yards on four carries. His longest eight yards, and here maybe one. Yeah, good job by BC again. Trying to, or uh, by BC, excuse me, in, uh, clogging up that that tackle the tackle area there as they've been able to swarm and make some good plays there minimal game for Alberta and I just get the feeling a big play has to come I don't yeah. know who's going to make it or which team or what it's going to look like but it, this game just feels like that needs to come I agree with that second and nine for team Alberta empty backfield for Page Page back to pass he's going to throw it long makes the reception does Clazy and there's a bigger play that you just mentioned at the sideline, it'll be a first down and into BC territory. Big play there as that was by almost about 20 yards or so on the play there by Clazy. You can see here Page has pressure. He's kind of throwing the ball off his back foot, yeah. but is able to get enough on the on the ball. And you can see there, there's a lot of trust you could tell between the quarterback and the receiver between Page and, and Clazy there is that's a, that's a risky throw, but he put it right on the money, was able to move the sticks for Alberta. Page from Spruce Grove and uh, Clazy is from Cochrane. So they don't even go to the same high school. But, yeah, they look like they have the timing down. Yeah, good chemistry between those two. Hand it to East here. East will get a couple of yards, get to the 50, and then push backwards. A couple of BC players in on the tackle, including Stanton. Stanton, pardon me. And it'll be second and about seven on the play here. Yeah, good job again by BC. And they're, Alberta's keep trying to run off tackle or, or, or off, that, uh, off the right side and then occasionally off the left as well. But... BC's been is making it tough, but Alberta, like, I think they're thinking they're going to crack one eventually here. And for BC, I think it, they, they're going to say, no, you're not. So we'll see what happens as the second half progresses. They gave him two officially. So second and eight from the 50-yard line. Empty backfield for Page. Here comes Team BC. Page gets the ball Ooh. off Ooh. and almost intercepted. It falls incomplete. Page took a big pop, too, as he let the ball fly. No penalties on the play. And it'll be third down. Yeah, a risky throw there, and that could have been disastrous for Alberta as I thought the BC defender was going to step in front of the Alberta receiver and take that one to the house. But no harm, no foul from Alberta's perspective. Just an incomplete pass as Page was under immense pressure there. Was able to get the ball away, but good good first drive for Manitoba coming out of the half, or excuse me, Alberta coming out of the half. They do get a couple first downs, tilt the field in their favor, and now look to have a good kick and pin BC deep. A couple of members of Team BC back deep waiting for this kick. And the kick in the direction of Runza. He will take it at his own 20, fall down, and maybe get to the 21. Yeah, not much of a return there. It looked like he just got lost his footing there as he tried to corral that one on the on the hop. So BC's back deep in their own territory, their own 21-yard line, or 
thereabouts. So BC will probably look to get a couple first downs here as they're celebrating on the sidelines there, feeling good about that first half. And I would think both teams probably felt pretty good coming out of that half, but I think both are probably feeling like we did where the offensive is going to come from someone somewhere. It's, these two teams are just too talented to, to not have that happen. I thought you meant hot, tired, and thirsty. <laughs> That's how I'm feeling up here. <laughs> First and 10, BC from their own 21. Seaman chased out of the pocket. Seaman to his right side, throws it down the field, and at the sideline, did he make the reception? That's Brittam, but no, looks like he's out of bounds. Out of bounds on the play. A heck of an effort there as he tried to, to toe tap on the sideline on the far side of the field here at the Apple Bowl, and that would have been enough for a first down, but his momentum took out it took him out of bounds. That'll bring up second and 10 for BC. Seems to be more pressure, too, on Sieben as Alberta's starting to get through that offensive line, get to the quarterback, chasing him out of the pocket, and make him hurry through some throws. That, that was really, really close. Good that was really close. A lot closer on the replay as we watch it here in the broadcast booth on the far side of the field. Second and 10 from their own 21. 8.41 to go, third quarter. BC with the lead, 14-9. to Sieben in a shotgun. He's going to go to the air. Here comes the pressure from Alberta. Nice nice. throw here, and that is caught by Lee Daniel, and he gets to the 40. A nice tackle by Team Alberta. Mwende, I believe, is the one that made the tackle, but a nice slant pattern made the catch and some positive yards. You'll see there in this one, there's a heck of a throw by Seaman. He sees the blitz is coming, and he knows he's probably going to get hit, but he's able to stand in there, deliver a shot, and that is, once his receiver, he knows he's going to have some space to throw because Alberta's coming with the pressure. So once his receiver there gets on the inside of, of the defensive back, that is a great dart by Seaman and moves the sticks for BC. To the 38, first and 10, BC. Seaman again in his shotgun. They toss to Bromley. He's going to try the right oh, side, nothing. but excellent read by Rate, who comes through the line and makes the tackle in the backfield. Yeah, Rate was coming off the outside there, so that was play was pretty much doomed unless somehow Rate wasn't going to make that tackle. But he was he was coming on the outside there, and you'll see he he he's, he's lined up perfectly to make this play here, as you see him break in right through there. Nice tackle there. Great job. There was no chance of the BC back back going anywhere. Loss of five, second and 15 from the 34. Seaman in a good passing situation here. Alberta going to rush four. Seaman going to roll to his left. Seaman, his toss is nice caught by Arinza right at the sideline. Going to be short of the first down, but positive yards. Positive yards gives, you, gives your punter more room to kick and hopefully tilt the field back in your favor. But... Good time he plays, Seaman with a nice throw there. That time he was rolling out to his left, so much harder throw by him, but he delivered a, a dart there, but it'll just be third down here, and Coach Philpott will send out the putt team. The last time we saw the kicker come out for Team BC, it was disastrous, but they got away with it because there was a penalty against Alberta. Otherwise, Alberta would have had a first and 10 at the 10, but we'll see what happens here. 7.05 remaining, 14-9 BC with the lead. Kicker for BC is back deep. Straight Plays high, kick. short yep. kick. Straight up in the air, bounces at the Alberta 50. Falconer will pick it up yep. on a hop. And You're gonna get, get a five yards, five yard, no yards penalty there. Good job by Alberta to pick that one up. So alert play there. Alberta should be scrimmaging with pretty good field position close to midfield. So a good start there for Alberta on this drive. They oh, hope yeah. and to leading to some points here in the second half. There's Falconer in the middle of your screen there. He was sprinting all the way up from about the 30-yard line, made the reception on the one hop, and then all of his momentum, all of his speed carrying forward. And there's the nil yards call. And it'll be first down, Team Alberta. Should be just inside in BC territory. Uh -huh. There goes the official marking it off. And there it is. They'll set up at the 53-yard line of Team BC, first and 10, 6.47 to go third quarter in this Canada Cup game. Winner moves on to face the defending champions team, Saskatchewan, on Thursday. Page back in the ballgame, empty backfield. Page fakes the throw, he's going to take off. Page off to the right side, it'll be spun around and tackled there at the 50. Short gain for Page, call it three, it'll be second and seven. Minimal gain there by Page as he spread everybody out there, but positive yards. BC, I'm sure, spoke at the at the half about limit, trying to limit his yards with his feet and force him to maybe throw the ball as they look to be eyeballing him a little bit closer there. And you can see there that as they came with their pressure, with their format pressure, it was more 
in line. There was not as many gaps for, for, for Page to dart in and out of. So good job by the BC front four. From the 50, second and eight. Page empty backfield in the shotgun, looking down the field. Pressure breaks down, he'll take off. Gets to the 50, 45, he dives forward. Depending on the spot, he could have a first down. It appears he'll be about a yard short, but yeah. we'll see where they place it. Yeah, I'm, I agree with you. It looks short from our angle, probably by a good half a yard, if not more. Gambling time here for Team Alberta to see if what they're... Oh, they'll go for it. I would go for it here. I think, they're, I think they've made enough... Uh, they've, they've done well enough in these situations where yeah. this should be a manageable third down for Team Alberta. Page is going to go under the center this time. They need a yard. Team BC crowding the box. He'll go off the left side. Looks like he should have it. He should It'll have enough. His forward momentum would get him enough for the first down there. Helped with got a little push from his buddy East in the background, in the backfield there. That should give Alberta the first down. Oh yeah, I'd be surprised if, he, yeah, there's the official call. It is a first down, so Alberta moves the sticks. It'll be first and 10 from the BC 42 yard line. The Fraser in there for a discussion with the officials as well. There's the replay. Yeah, I thought he got Fraser. a bit of a, sh a bit of a push from his from his teammates there, but that was all Paige there as he just took a step to his left and was able to get it himself. East in the backfield, three receivers to the left, two to the right. And a shotgun, BC gonna rush four, Paige. Clazy just out of his reach. Good effort by him to dive to his backside, but couldn't quite make the reception. Yeah, ball was thrown a little bit behind Clazy there. That would have been a really tough catch. His momentum was taking him more into the field. That was thrown more towards the, the sidelines there. So that would have been a, a tough catch. It would have been a minimal gain there for Clazy. But so second and 10 from the 42. 440 to go, third quarter, 14-9 BC with the lead. Page, of course, in the shotgun. Same setup here as we saw a moment ago. BC going to rush what looks like four, maybe five on a blitz. Here comes the blitz. And it will be Graney just getting to the quarterback just in time to throw the timing off. And his pass is incomplete. He had to rush it, had nowhere to go. Even if he makes the completion, the defenders was right there. Yeah, good blitz by BC as they did come with five. off the. They brought an extra guy off the outside there. And they had the, the numbers in their favor. And the... The blitzing back came through pretty pretty easily for BC, and Page had nothing to do really with that but throw it to the feet of his receivers. So good call by BC. They'll get their offense back on the field as Alberta will punt here on third down. Two receivers back deep, and the kick. That's a better one for Team Alberta. Oregard will get it at his own 12, make a move, flags fly, gets to the 20, and not much further after that as it'll be pushed backwards, but there is a flag on the field, possible holding in that area. That's what I would think there. But this should be on BC, I would think. Either a hold or an illegal block, likely a hold. But we'll wait for the officials to make the official announcement as they will huddle and talk about it. There's Oregard, makes the reception, made a nice move there. And there's the flag flying in the top of the screen. And now Oregard didn't want to get pushed down. But yeah, they are pushing BC back. So it was a legal block, so hands to the back. So there was a, I saw in the replay, there was a little bit of a, a push, if you will, by Team BC, but that'll push BC back and deep in their own territory. So they got to be careful here. They have some have some good play calling, some smart play calling here. Hopefully get a first down or two for their sake and at least, at least give themselves some breathing room. The ball will be placed at the seven yard line. First and 10, Sieben in a shotgun, Bromley behind them who gets the handoff and he runs right into the waiting arms of the defensive line led by Max Sama, or Sawa, Sama, pardon me, and who makes the tackle as soon as he receives the handoff. Yeah, Sama was right there. Rate was, was pinching down as well, so he was right there. That one I thought if, if Sieben had pulled that one around the corner because Rate crashed right down he might have been able to do something with his feet himself. So we'll watch to see if that happens later on in this game, but good defensive play by Team Alberta. Nice substitution for Team BC as Burnham comes in very late. And a second and 10 flags fly. The pass is caught, in no, incomplete. Looking for Oregard, but I'm not sure what the flag is. Looks like in the vicinity off, offside. Yeah, it's that gonna be probably, might be offside against Alberta. Oh, it's against no. BC, so one of the receivers was off. So Alberta will likely decline this, bring up third down. BC will 
have a decision if they want to punt from their own end zone or maybe give up two points. Do you push them back even more if you're Team Alberta? No, I think okay. you I think you get there off the field. You're right. I think you bring up the third down. Yep. And then just not to you want to risk. Steven's a, a playmaker type guy, so I don't know if you want to give him another another shot to make a play even deep that deep. So I think that declining is the right call by by Team Alberta. Now they'll just hit Team Coach Philpott will have to decide if he wants to kick this or potentially give up the two points. Well, the punting game for BC hasn't been all that good. So if I'm Coach Philpott, I take the safety. The only downside is that it makes this a three-point game, so now a field goal could potentially tie it, whereas Alberta needs to right. score a touchdown at this point. But to me, you give up the safety. Don't chase points this, this early in the game. There's lots of game left. Wow. Oh, they're going to kick it. Oh, boy. Partially blocked line drive kick. To the 30, takes a left-hand turn to the 33. That's where Falconer will pick it up, makes a move. Falconer will dance back to the 30, and that's where the offense will take over. Well, it's fortunate if you're BC. Yeah, really fortunate, because their punting game hasn't been spectacular by any no. stretch today. It, they've, they've kind of struggled with, with their timing and that and, and, and whatnot. So I'm surprised they didn't give up the field goal. As you can see, Alberta is going to have really good field position to start this at the, 30. At the BC 30-yard line. Yeah. Although Clazy is departing, which I'm surprised about for Team Alberta. Page is back in as quarterback in the huddle as they break the huddle, and Page will stand in a shotgun. Four receivers set, two in the backfield for Team Alberta, including Ramirez. East will depart, and they hand the ball to Ramirez. He'll go up the middle and gain three, maybe four yards. Good first run there by Ramirez. Yeah, very. T it's tough running up that up in the middle there with BC, and that was number 43, Ryan Ryan Shaw, with a nice play for BC. Is that's trying to run in that area, and you'll see the red helmet come through right there to make a nice tackle on the legs of the back there, limiting the game to about four on the play. Clays you back in the ball game. East and also Ramirez, the two running backs, are sitting out on a second and seven. Alberta does have a runner in the backfield, although I don't have him on my roster. Number 30. Let's hope he doesn't get the ball. Back to pass is Page. His pass is complete to Falconer. Gets to the 20, breaks a tackle inside the 20 to about the 16. Should no, be enough for a first down. Yeah, he's got enough for a first down. Where he caught it, he also did as well, but then he comes backwards, and that makes Coach's hair go gray really fast because yeah. you're almost, you have the first down, then you're coming back to try and get more yards, and you're risking getting stopped short. But good play by Faulkner there. He's able to move the sticks, and Alberta's knocking at the door here inside the BC 20-yard line. Inside a buck, 30 left, third quarter. And the mark the ball at the 17-yard line, first and 10. Page with Ramirez and East in the backfield. Three receivers over to the left side. Whoa. High snap, Page will knock it to himself, takes off left, then right, still with the football. Page somehow avoids a couple of tacklers, takes on a man, and gets down to about the 10-yard line. BC won't like that tackling there. They, they, they probably feel they should have had Page stop back a few yards at least, but kudos to Page. He used his legs there. The high snap throws his timing off, but he's able to bring the ball down, and you could tell he's just trying to improvise, look for somebody, and then it's... Just get what I can with my feet, and kudos to him. He's able to pick up some positive yards. He is taking on. Doesn't matter if they're bigger players than him or smaller players. He takes these players and on and, 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 he's, and he's taking some hits. Yeah. Like I mean, he hasn't been sliding. He hasn't been going out of bounds. He's been he's been very physical. And a lot of many times he's been the one delivering the contact to yeah. BC. So you wonder if when, so that so that'll be an illegal contact, probably on one of the BC defenders. So that's yeah, a costly Crenshaw. penalty. Devin Crenshaw whistled for that one. And, and it, you normally don't see it unless the ball is necessarily thrown, but obviously he must have pushed or, or knocked the, the Alberta receiver down as the crowd comes into life here at the Apple Bowl here as Alberta's knocking on the door, looking to take the lead back. First and goal from the nine. Page in a shotgun. Page. Going to give it to the receiver end around to the five. Spinning. Flag flies at the end of the play. It gets all the way down to inside the five, about the two-yard line. Civiteras with the carry. This but one's going to come. Call? This is going to come back. It's a hold against Alberta, so this is going to be a costly one for them. That's a late call, too. It did come in late because the back, you can see how they run the jet sweep there, and he's already passed it. So, I mean, it's that's a really late call and probably wasn't even needed to be 
blocked. Like he was out of the back yeah. was already, the, or the, the receiver was coming across in motion. He was already cleared long pass for number 60 was for Team Alberta. So that's a costly penalty for Alberta. That will push them back because they, they, I like the call they did. They, they jumped both of the backs. So they outnumbered the BC defenders, but unfortunately for them, they took that holding call. Parker Kellington, by the way, was the one that was whistled for the foul. So back to the nine yard, 19 yard line. First and 20 now. I guess it's still first and goal. Eh? First and goal, yeah. Fake the same play. Page with a nifty move to avoid one tackler, but not the rest of the team. And a short pickup for Page. Yeah, really short play. They tried to fake the jet sweep and pull that down. As you're gonna see, Alberta's bringing in more of their pass, a couple pass receivers, including including Clavey here. So that's that's they're gonna bring those guys in, but you can see they tried to run that fake jet sweep, but BC wasn't biting on that. And this will be the final play of the third quarter. Still want somebody to throw vertical. Like all their, their throws seem to be into the flats. I'm waiting for somebody to, to throw one down the seams or to the outside towards the end zone. They may have to hear on a second and goal from the 19. Page, back to pass. Page airing it out a little bit. There's some contact oh at oh the boy. goal line and it'll be pass interference. The intended receiver was Clazy. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, That's a tough one. We're going to see this. At, I thought he was slipping. We're going to see it here on the replay. I thought Clazy was slipping on the play. Maybe I'm wrong. We'll watch it on the replay. But this, to me, is a little bit of contact there. But he's trying to – the thing that makes me think that that was maybe not pass interference, but we'll give the officials the benefit of the doubt. But the reason that I thought it was is because he's coming back to the football. When he's trying to come back, it almost looks like he, he loses his footing on that one. But – that might be a tough call against BC, as I'm sure they're thinking that was just a, a slip on Clazy's part on the grass field here at the Apple Bowl. Well, they'll put the ball at the five, so it's definitely against BC. It'll be first and goal from the five. And the quarter can't end on a defensive penalty, so we'll get one more play here in the third quarter. 14-9 the score in favor of BC, at least right now. First and goal from the five. Page is going to go up under center. Three running backs, including Easton Ramirez and the unnamed number 30. And they fake it to him. He'll go with the left nice. side and he'll be set. As Axel Stanton comes in and makes the sack, and that will end the third quarter. Big play there by Axel Stencil there, and he was he was right in the backfield. I'm surprised by that play call. Bringing, for going under center, center like that, having the three backs in here, and you're doing play action pass, that surprises me that they would try that, but the risky play there, I think they were trying to hopefully catch BC napping with a with a jumbo set or a full back, full house backfield, but kudos to BC, they were able to sniff that one out, hold them out of the end zone for now, and. We'll see what happens when the, when the fourth quarter starts. We'll take a 60 second break, 14-9 BC with the lead. Broadband, Reality One, Ramada Hotel and Conference Center, City of Kelowna, Okanagan Sun Football Club, and BC Lions Alumni Association. shot of the moon here in Beautiful. Kelowna. As we get ready for the fourth quarter, the score 14-9 in favor of BC, but Alberta will have a second and goal from the five yard line. No scoring in that third quarter. Yeah, Team. very defensive quarter, and I, like I said, at the, at the, in, the, in that third quarter, 
keep waiting for that big play to come. Like when, and yeah. maybe it's, it's just not going to come. And these two defenses are just playing too well today. But knowing that how confident both these coach, these teams, and these coaching staffs were of their offense, I'm just surprised we haven't seen it. So maybe it's just a case of the defense is having a night tonight. And they'll place the ball. Oh, I guess after the penalty? After the sack. After the sack, yes, of course. So second and goal. As Page will take off. Page avoids one rush, gets back to the 10, sidesteps his way to the five. It'll be knocked down there. It'll be third and goal from the five. Decision I, time here for Alberta. Nifty piece of running, though. By Very Josh. Nice I like his play yeah. here today. He's been gutsy, and every time he gets sacked, I like this call sending out the field goal. Take your points. You, 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 I like it. I don't. Th I think you take what's given to you here. This should be a chip shot of a field goal. But I like the fact that when Page is getting tackled, he's always going forward. Yeah. A lot of times great quarterbacks point. That's a great point. sometimes are going backwards. But in, in Page's case, every time he gets tackled when he's running the ball, he, he's going forward. This will be a 13-yard field goal for Team Alberta. James Keene, the kicker. There's Page in the middle of your screen. Keen ready, low snap. The kick is up and good, and Keen knocks it through from 13 yards. And it's now 14-12. So BC electing not to give up the safety on that last possession that they had cost them three points. So if, if you're BC, you're probably going, okay, after Alberta scrimmage from the 30-yard line, some penalties, some pass interference calls, giving up three is not terrible. If you're Alberta, you're probably going, now another field goal could potentially win us this football game if the defense continues to play the way it is. So, so kind of no harm, no foul there after BC made the decision to kick the ball out of their own end zone. I forgot about that, that that's, this is the drive oh, the that Same that sequence, yeah. yeah. So 14-12, and Alberta will break huddle, and they'll come out with their kicking unit. 14-12, 11-01, so early stages of this fourth quarter. The but winner I, moves on. Sorry, Tyler. No worries. Finish your thoughts, sir. That was pretty much that. <laughs> <laughs> but I like the call. I thought I thought Alberta might hesitate and go for that one because it would. it's so tempting to do it. But knowing this is a defensive struggle, take the three points, yeah. get yourself now to within a field goal where it could win. I like the call by Alberta on that particular play. Oregard and Arinza are back deep for Team BC, awaiting the kickoff from Keene, who just knocked through a 13-yard field goal moments ago. Keene tees it up from the 45. Here he comes. Good kick by Keene, chasing Oligard back to his seven-yard line, and here he comes. Oligard gets to the 20. Now the 25, and he'll be tackled there about the 30-yard line as he falls forward. And Team BC, who hasn't scored since the 35-second mark of the second quarter, will come back on the field. Decent field position for Team BC here. I think, I think they're going to want to have their offense be on the field for a little while, at least get a couple first downs. Give your defense a bit of a rest here because they were on the field. BC's defense was on the field. I think we don't have our time of possession stats, but to me, they were on the field the, major the, the majority of that third quarter. So yeah. I think if you're BC, you got an opportunity now. Get a couple first downs. Maybe respond with some points against Alberta. Expand that lead back again. But I think BC, at the very least, wants to get a couple first downs here. Chase Natton is the injured Team BC member. Might be a cramp as well as they're working on his left calf, it looks like. Again, it hasn't got a lot cooler here at the Apple Bowl. The sun at least has set and gone behind the mountains. And as you can see, the field is in the shadows, or in the shade. He looks and to be OK yeah, on the play, right. which is good. He's had a good game here today. We've called yep. his name a couple of times. Yeah. I'd like to see BC go back now. They're on the, you can see they're on the left hash here. Here's a good opportunity with three receivers to roll. Uh, roll the cue out here and, and see what he can do on this on this particular play. Steven's been athletic, rolling to his right. Murphy in the backfield. So first and 10 from the 31 yard line. Steven is gonna hand it off here to Murphy. Murphy will go up the middle, breaks a tackle and gets into that linebacker core. And he'll be knocked down about the 39 yard line. Tough run in there, right up the middle. No nonsense, just lower your shoulder, get what you can. And good gain on first down by BC does get about seven or eight on Got the play, eight, probably yeah. eight, maybe even eight and a half. So good run on BC, and now they're set up in a good position here on second down. Second and two, we'll call it. Alberta looking at their bench to see what the defensive coordinator is calling, and BC huddling up. And they'll break the huddle with 10-21 remaining in the fourth quarter. Second and two. Seaman gonna remain in a shotgun. Seaman gonna toss it here to Murphy. 
Murphy, big collision there, right at the 40 yard line, right at the sticks. Initial impact looked like he was stopped, but I think it's as his momentum took him forward past the 40 yard line, I think this is going to be enough for a first down. We'll see here. It was Carter Smith yeah. that tackled him. Boy, that was big contact. That was a lot of contact there. They're going to give him a first down. And at first glance, I didn't think he was going to be able to have it, and then he kind of lunged his way forward for that extra half a yard a yard to get the first down. So first and 10 from the 41-yard line. Two runs by Murphy has got them here to the 41-yard line. Murphy remains in the game in the backfield. Behind Sieben. Sieben, there's that rule to the right, Tyler, you're talking about. Sieben is going to break a tackle, shed a tackle, oh boy. and then a little flick pass. I think they're calling incomplete. They are. Dangerous throw there. That was a tougher one because they rolled him to the, the right, which I like, but the, in this case, he was going to the short side of the field, so he's going to the boundary right. side, so he doesn't have a whole lot of, of move. Can't, there's not a whole lot of area for him to go. And in that case, I think Steven should have probably checked up and, and, and planted his feet and thrown the ball down the field because he just runs out of room here. And a dangerous little flick pass, like a shovel, like a Patrick Mahomes shovel pass. Yeah, that's dangerous, especially Very when you dangerous. know you're not going to get much in the, in the terms of positive yards. So that's one in a 14-12 game when your defense is playing pretty well. You're thinking to yourself, don't short field this and, and, and make a costly yeah. mistake. Second and 10, some confusion. The BC offense putting the receivers over to the left side. Steven looks that way. A little bubble screen to the receiver. Caught by Rinza, and then he'll be brought down with no gain as he ran basically on the line of scrimmage and was tackled there. Good defense by Bailey of Team Alberta. I think and this is going to be unnecessary. Long. Sorry to interrupt you, Ryan. I think this is going to be an unnecessary roughness against BC. I saw number 65 for BC in 92. Kind of getting into it after the play, so we'll see. I think it's going to go against BC, but we'll see. I think the referees pick somebody out on this one. See what the call is here from the officials, 14-12. And it is unnecessary roughness against BC, you're right. Yep. Not sure the microphone continues to cut out on the official. I'm not so, so good at reading lips. I don't so know what they're here. saying there at right at the end was because it's a 15-yard penalty, it'll be a loss of down as well. So it'll be a third down, but they're also going to mark off the 15-yard penalty. So that's it's not a case of declining the penalty and having BC kick the ball. They're going to be kicking it, but now they're going to be 15 yards further back. Yeah, the line of scrimmage is now the BC 25-yard line. So costly penalty there because it could have been kicking around the, the 40 or so. Now they're... 15 yards back. Alberta should get the ball on BC's side of midfield, especially based on the punting game today for BC. Yeah. I'm surprised these returners are deep as deep as they are. I thought they'd move up by now, but they're still pretty deep for Alberta. Standing at their own 45-yard line. There's a better kick. Better kick there. And Clazy standing right there at the 46, makes the reception, gets to midfield. Clazy gets a stiff arm, then gets hammered down. There's a flag on the play as Team BC picks up a nice tackle by Finley Duncan. Out of Victoria. Injury, Alberta player on the field. But it, it, another flag on the play here, likely in the neighborhood of a legal block or a hold, I'm assuming here by Alberta. But That's Rate on the ground as well for Team Alberta. He's been e excellent defensively. But the trainer out to attend to him at the 40 yard line. So it's a hold on Alberta. Tyson Sop out of Calgary. 5'11", 165 is whistled with the hold as he continued to attend to Rate. Walker Rate, 6'1", out of Edmonton. Again, he's been great here, I think, defensively. If Alberta goes on to win this game, you got to look at number 44, potentially defensive player of the game. I'm not sure if they award that here at the Canada Cup, but he'd get my vote. Yeah, he's been pretty good, and he's... He's just been, he just has a motor and he's just been playing really well and doesn't stop and that's the type of guy coaches like to have. It's just a, a physical good football player who, who just goes after the opposing team. And they're looking at his left calf and ankle area. Sorry, make that the right calf. And they're gonna help him up and we'll see. We don't have a shot of it unfortunately on camera but he is walking off gingerly and he's going to get help from the trainer and one of the assistant coaches. So that's a big loss for Team Alberta. I don't suspect he'll be back in this ballgame. With 8.30 to go, he could, but 
the way he's moving off the field, I don't suspect he'll be back. Yeah, that one doesn't strike me as cramped just because they were working, looking at the ankle and the, and the and is down in that area more so than a, than a shin or a calf. So we hope for Team Alberta and that he's able to come back as soon as possible. But he is walking very gingerly mm -hmm. off the field. I'm, I'm sure, sure a few of the scouts and recruiters from different universities and colleges who are here in attendance had number 44 circled as a guy to watch. And that's not going to be good for Retay. No, like I say, he's just a good football player. That's he's just one of those guys. So that's a loss. Hopefully he'll hopefully he'll be able to come back for Team Alberta. Back to action. Ball to 44. First and 10 for Team Alberta. Page will hand it here to East. East will try the right side with some speed and then runs into the waiting arms of a couple of defenders from BC and push backwards. Yeah, BC has, has been really good inside the tackles on their run defense today. Alberta keeps trying to make that exact same run with East. Most of the time they're trying to go to the right-hand side. And BC just isn't having much of it. I mean, that's about a three-yard gain there. And Alberta hasn't been able to crack one or even had one go for 10, 12, 15 yards. It's yeah. been pretty stingy there on that BC defense. Staten made the tackle there for Team BC. He's on that right side. And Alberta will come back to the ball. Second and six, they're calling it. Page, empty backfield in a shotgun. He has to run out of the pocket, runs to his right side. Page being chased, now he'll turn the corner. Flags fly, has the first down if it stands, but I believe this one will be coming back on a hold. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. Is, is Once he tried to get the corner, that's where the flag came out. Yeah. That usually is in the neighborhood of where a hold would happen. And that's There's too really bad, no that's other penalty run. that could no. be called in that area. No, unless it's some, sometimes you'll get a hands to the face or something yeah. like that occasionally, but I would suspect this is a hold. It is. Alberta, two. Oh, on the running back, too. Trey East. And to me, he had the corner. So, I mean, it's not like he had to do that. I mean, Page had already had the corner there. You can see him dancing through the down to the third level of the BC defense. And a costly penalty there as they were going to be set up in a good spot. Now they're going to be staring at a second and long. But I like Page. He could have stepped out of bounds. Yeah. At, uh, right on the sideline there. But he stepped back inside, tried to make another move. Took another hit and picked up more yardage. Of course, all for naught with the penalty. But still, I, I like the heart. Yeah, I like how he plays the game. He's a, he's physical. He, he wants to be in there. He's a battler. So second and forever for Page and company. Little bubble screen and a throw incomplete way off. Yeah, that's not one of his better throws tonight. He he didn't even look like he set his feet. He's just His feet were planted in the mud and they, they didn't even step into that one. So that's one that Page will probably like to have back as that one just seemed to get away from him. So that, was, that was all arm as close to say. Yeah, third down and Alberta will have to kick. So BC in theory will get some pretty good field position here. Although the kicker for Alberta hasn't been too bad. Samuel Bowen out of Sherwood Park has been able to boot the ball down the field unlike the BC kicker. But Oegard and Arizna are back deep for Team BC. Standing at around their 40 yard line. High snap, kicker brings it down. His kick is decent. It's towards the right side, takes a bounce, a BC bounce. And I believe Oegard will pick it up at about the 50 yard line and then be knocked out of bounds. He was hoping to get the no yards penalty on there. We couldn't tell from our vantage point if Alberta was able to get out of that five yard territory, the zone air, but that's that was the objective here as you see it looked to be kind of close there on the replay, but great field position for BC starting this drive. That was Logan Swan that picked up the ball out of West Vancouver. Got some positive yards into Team Alberta's end as well. And I don't think they've marked off the penalty yet, have they? There's the official call. Oh. It's a hold against Team BC. Costly one there. I didn't even see a flag on the field. I was watching the return, so costly penalty by BC there. That'll push them back on their own side of midfield, so. It was Bromley that was whistled with the infraction. 6.46 to go, 14-12 the score in favor of Team BC, who opened up the scoring 7-0 on a one-yard touchdown run by the quarterback Sieben with 1.31 to go in that first quarter. Then a conceded safety put Alberta on the board, made it 7-2. That was in the second quarter. Then Josh Page, a five-yard touchdown run at 3.38 of the second quarter, made it 9-7. As they give to Bromley here, Bromley will go to the left side, gets across the 35, 
around the 37. He's brought down there. Good yeah. run there by Bromley as he gets off the left side. Positive yards. He ran the ball actually oh, pretty well in the first half, I thought. So good to see him back in there getting positive yards for BC. That sets up a manageable second and five. But big play here is if Alberta get their offense stopped, get a stop here, get their offense back on the field, that'll be huge. Second and call it four. Seaman will go back to Bromley. Bromley up the nice middle. Play. Alberta great was play. waiting for him, and Alberta knocks him backwards for a great play. Aaron Parker with the tackle. Yeah, nice play by Parker there. As you could tell, he just beat his man point blank, and that'll force BC to bring out the punt team. So a, a, a good hold by Alberta. They got the holding penalty against BC. That pushed them back. BC wasn't able to convert a first down. Now Alberta will get the ball back, and... Again, maybe it's on special teams that this, this big play will happen. It could be a this return. Big play, yeah. Did you make a bet with Vegas? I, th I, I, was <laughs> I was like you. I was thinking this was going to have some, some big offensive plays. I, I know how, how much these teams think of their offenses. Yeah. And again, there's lots of talent out here on both sides. So it's, it's, it's just been a very well-played football game on both sides of the ball, but especially the defensive one. Quick two and out for BC. They'll kick, line up to kick. There's a good snap, and the kick is a low-line driver. It'll be picked up by uh, Clazy at his own 40. Clazy gets to the 50, Look has out. some blockers, gets around the corner, and he'll be dragged and pushed out of bounds at the BC 45. Good return by Clazy. Yeah, really good return by Clazy. If he's able to round the corner, he's got a couple of his buddies hoping to lead him down the sidelines there. I think it was number 24 for BC who made a really nice tackle there, and if, that, if he doesn't make that tackle, he... Clazy might have, a, have a, a cavalry leading him to the end zone. It's Bromley's 24 if he did I make see it the on the tackle. replay here. Bromley's got a white helmet. There he comes. Oh, it's number 12, excuse me. And then Bromley finishing him off. Yeah. So you were half right. That was half right. Yeah. And 12 is half. Of, half is 12 <laughs> is 24. Right. That's right. Lucas Fever. Good play there by those two. Otherwise, Clazy's and it might be in the promised land. <laughs> First and 10 for Team Alberta from Team BC's 46. Page down the middle, it is knocked and incomplete. Deflected. deflected. The yeah, Fraser looked like got his big mid up there and just knocked it down. Yeah, it might have been big number 75, Malka Fraser. You could tell he was in there and again, just got his hand on there to deflect that one. We'll see if we can see it on the replay here, but that could have been trouble. Lots of times the, the, the people are afraid of when the ball gets tipped. Sometimes it goes up in the air, and that's the worst thing that an offense would want because that just gives more opportunity for the defense to sure. intercept it. At the 46, second and 10. Page, empty backfield. Page looking for receivers. Got Falconer. Gets to the 40, hops over his own man, and then a big contact shy of the first down. And it will be, be gambling yards. time. Yeah, I would think it's... With four, just under five minutes down, left yeah. here. With probably three yards. Yeah, they'll put the ball at the 39-yard line. you got to get to the 36 for a first down, so third and three and from is, the left hash. Is this a situation where Page will try and do it with his legs? Third and three. Here comes the crowd into play as well. Ramirez in the backfield. Page in the shotgun, Ramirez leaves. Page back to pass, here comes the pressure. Page Huge is play. gonna be sacked. Huge play there by BC as he came from, from Page's left, he came right around the corner. Page didn't even see him as he had his back to him. We're trying to get a number there. Vincent Bronner. Great play there on the, from the backside. You can see Page has no idea the big man's coming to track him down from his backside. 6'1 and a half, 240, able to track down the quarterback. Out of Chilliwack, Bronner made a nice play. And now BC will take over. Yeah, big On play downs. by Bronner there. Alberta turns it over, and you got to think if BC can get a couple first downs here, it's going to make it awfully tough for Alberta, especially with the field position starting at their own 50. Something they haven't been able to do, though, is Team BC's sure get a first down on this good, solid Alberta defense. They give it to Bromley. Bromley right up the middle, spins off a couple of tacklers. Nice play by Bromley, gets to midfield. That'll be a pickup of about four to be second and six. Yeah, good run there by Bromley. I thought Alberta was gonna be able to stop him with maybe a yard or two, but he was able to spin forward and get an extra yard or two, setting up a manageable second down. 
I think the one thing that when I saw him come through there is just they're getting to the point where you want to have two hands on the ball and not break mm -hmm. free. And you can see Bromley there. He's got his right arm free as he's trying to get some extra yardage. And that'll make uh, the coaches a little nervous as we get to the, the, at this point in the fourth quarter. And BC's going to call a timeout with 3.25 to go in this fourth quarter. 14-12 the score on a stunning evening here in Kelowna. The first day of this Canada Cup. All eight teams will see action once again on Thursday. Team BC will play at 7 o'clock, regardless if they win or lose on Thursday. And depending on if they win or lose, Alberta, I'm not sure what time they will play at on Thursday. But Team B, uh, whoever pl wins will play Team Saskatchewan. Yeah, it looks like the loser, the loser of this game looks to be playing in the 1 o'clock game. Unless it's BC. Unless it's BC, of course, right. then it'll be at the 7. So Alberta loses, or wins, I guess, they'll play at 1 o'clock. Yeah. In the heat of a Thursday afternoon in Kelowna. If Alberta wins, they'll play Saskatchewan. Whoever loses will play New Brunswick. So second and five from midfield. Arinza has it on the receiver end around, and he's going to have the first down as he gets across midfield into Alberta territory down to the 38-yard line. You're going to see a really big block here by number 66, Sebastian. I'm trying to see a last Sibbert here. And it's big number 66 as he was able to one that sprung the edge here. That was a really nice block there by number 66. Too bad we didn't see get a replay on that one, but that was where that play here go. comes right here. Watch number 66 as he right round He's leads the range. Right there, wow. bang. That was just a little push. <laughs> I was afraid they might have thought he was from, coming from at from the side, but I thought, are they going to call a clip on the back, hitting him in the back? But right. a great block there by 66 to help his teammate out. First and 10 from the 39. Steven will hand to Bromley. Bromley will try the left side. Bromley runs into the pack, and he'll be brought down by Bradley Rodden with the tackle. And it'll be second and long for BC with three minutes to go. Yeah, three-minute warning here at the Apple Bowl. So BC is going to be second and long here. Again, I think this is where if you're BC, you're, you're second and long. One of two mindsets here. You can try and run the ball, get some positive yards, maybe punt, keep Alberta back, play some defense. Or you put the ball in Owen Seaman's hands and see if he can make a pass you, or use his legs to get a first down and, and maybe put the dagger into Alberta. We'll see what Coach Philpot and the offense decide to do here. Well, Coach Philpot told me that Seaman's the real deal. We'll see if they rely on him and his arm. Six foot four. He's got the frame of a quarterback out of Terry Fox in Vancouver. He's in a shotgun here with Bromley behind him. He's going to go to the air. Over the middle, that nice one catch. is caught. A reception by Oligard. Really and it's a nice first catch. down. Really nice catch there by Oligard. He had to go up and extend himself. But fortunately for him, there's not an Alberta defender within a couple of yards of him. Otherwise, that's the times where you, you have to extend yourself too much. You might take a big hit. So Steven stood in there, threw the dart that he needed to throw, steps into it, good throw. Oligard comes nice down catch. with it right in front of the, the, the Alberta secondary. Great catch. Inside the 25-yard line, put it at the 24. First and 10. Sieben trying to get some last-second instructions. 2.31 to go. Time is ticking. BC with the lead, but it's only two. They hand to Bromley. Bromley will be met at the line of scrimmage. Good defense by Alberta. A short gain, if any. It'll be second and long. Yeah, risky play there by BC as there seemed to be some confusion as far as play call there and they were between Seaman and the sidelines. Now he's going to come over and talk to Coach Philpott as there looked to be a little bit of confusion on that particular play on first down for a straight handoff off the left-hand side. Timeout by, Alber Time by Alberta. Yeah. So that's at least their second one that they've used in this half. they got to save some time. There's 2.20 left in case BC does score. They need some time on the clock to try to respond. Good number, I think I saw number 44, Rattay, come back into the game too. So if that's the case for Alberta, that's a big plus for their defense. As I think I saw him make his yeah, way onto the field. You're right, Tyler. He's right in the middle of that huddle. And he's jogging. He looks to be A-OK. -okay. It was his right ankle or lower leg that was injured earlier on in this quarter, but he seems to be fine now. Yeah, good to have him back. This is a big play again. I think you probably put the ball in the hands of Owen Seaman and see what he can do. He's got a couple. We haven't seen, heard much from Colton Makel in this second half. Maybe they go in his direction here. Or Oligart, maybe in his direction. Or see if Siva could do it with his feet. 
Second and seven. Ball placed at the 21. They give to Murphy. Murphy gonna go up the middle, crosses the 20. It's a short gain for Murphy. It'll be third and about four. So I would be kicking here if I'm BC, if they've got any sense of, if they can kick the field goal, if they have the ability to kick it, that would be the smart play. Extend it to where Alberta would need a touchdown to win. So this is a big, big kick there. Conservative call, but I think, I think if you're in BC's head right now, there, that'll be their final timeout as Alberta will be out of those now. But I think if you're BC, you're saying, you know what, let's take the crack at getting this field goal and make Alberta drive the field. That, that field goal here takes yep. obviously that off the table for Alberta as they would need to score. So I think you're putting faith in your defense to say, we don't think you're going to be able to drive the field and score on us. And it'll be a 25 yard field goal attempt for Marcus Jones. Six foot three, 185 out of Alder Grove. Attends Lang Langley Senior Secondary. The holder will be Lucas Fever, the backup quarterback at a Chilliwack. So he's taking a lot of steps, as you can see. He's like, I'd be worried here. Like he's most of the time kickers aren't that far back. So let's see if let's hope he gets this up and through. If you're a BC fan, because this is a big this is a big kick. Ball in the middle of the field. Jones is ready. High snap brought down. The kick is up and it is Good. through. Big kick. 25-yard field goal from the kicker, Marcus Jones. Yeah, that's a big kick, and I, like his timing on that was actually pretty good because Alberto obviously was coming after this one, so that was actually a really well-timed kick. I thought he was might be in a little bit of trouble being as deep as he was, but kudos to the BC kicker, and they were able to expand that lead. That's a big kick, now puts the pressure on Alberta with, with just over two minutes left here, and now they have to score to take the lead. 2.14 to go. 17 to 12. BC scoring on a one yard touchdown run, 131 in the first quarter, then a 26 yard touchdown from Sieben to Noah Brinham. That was with 35 seconds to go in the first half. And now Marcus Jones, a 25 yard field goal. The team Alberta getting a safety back in the second quarter. Josh Page, a five yard touchdown run and a field goal themselves, a 13 yard field goal by James Keene. And they're going to like to take the ball at the 35. 2.14 to go. Here we go. Page in a shotgun. Empty backfield. has got to throw. Here comes the pressure. Dumps it off here. That's Falconer. Falconer to the 40. Tries to get to the corner, but it takes a big lick. From I'm trying to see who that was, but it was a big hit by Team BC as the defensive back, Devin Crenshaw, came up to crunch him. Could you call him Crunshaw? You could call him Crunshaw after that. That was a good defensive play here. Here comes eight watches. Right Boom. there, whammo. Oh, Both like guys that. delivering the blow to each other on that one. So that was a heck of a heck of a collision there. Love the word whammo. Page back to pass. Page down the field. It is cut. Oh, he was close to. That's number. That's a, that's their main offensive weapon. It's crazy. Inside BC territory, all the way down to the 42. There's that big play you've been looking for. That's the one, and they finally went vertical right down the seam there, and that's the one that I was surprised they got. But you can see Page stands in there. He's got a little bit of time. He's got a pass lane. Zips it right in there, and that's a heck of a place to play there by for Team Alberta. And now an injured running back. It's East that has gone down to an E. And a Team Alberta's out of timeouts, as you mentioned. They are out of timeouts. So they, they've got a fair amount of time right now with a minute 50. So lots of time in the Canadian game. But I'm thinking if you're in Alberta, you're, 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 where's the ball on the 44, I would say, 43, yeah. 43 yeah. probably. Yep. So you're 43 yards away. I, if I'm Alberta and I'm, and I'm Paige, I'm looking for Clazy. He seems to be the guy. Yep. That's, I think, where you're going to have the most success here as you're trying to get into the end zone. Falconer's a good option too, though. Yeah, Falconer's absolutely. had a nice game. So a couple of options, but yeah, Clazy is the big play guy. He's lined up in the slot on the left side. Four receivers on that left side. That's the way that Page is going to roll. Page is going to take off. Page gets to the 40 and will be dragged out of bounds at about the 38-yard line. He was reaching for extra yards. Picked up maybe four or five on the play. Yeah, he had a positive game there again. At least five, yeah, so there he is there. So that's a good gain on first down. Obviously, Alberta is now is in three down territory, so that's what I'm sure they're saying on the sidelines right now as they as they talk to Page on the sidelines, saying, "Listen, we we've, we've got two more downs here as you're in three down territory for Team Alberta." 
Max Ganey, the local kid, able to drag him out of bounds. So second and four they're giving him. They picked up six on the play. And again, Page in the backfield. And a shotgun, Ramirez behind him. Page, a dart to Falconer oh, goes through his hands and incomplete. That's one I think he's frustrated with. He would like to have that one back because yeah. that looked to be right in the midst of Falconer. We'll see it on the replay here. He had his back to us, so we can't tell. But it looked to be a dart by Page to Falkner. He just couldn't hang on. I think he tried to make a move before actually yeah. receiving the football. With 1.30 to go, here it is. Third and four. Alberta obviously needs a first down. Yeah, that's a big play, especially if they, even, they don't even have the luxury of being able to stop the clock too much with they're out of timeout. So a turnover here would be costly if you're Alberta. Biggest play of the game right here. Page in a shotgun. BC rushing four. Page. Oh, he's got Clazy. He wants to go deep. He's got Clazy. Clazy wide open at the 10, 5, and he's and dragged down just before the end zone. You could see that coming from a mile away. BC bit on, on the short pass there, and Clazy was able to sneak through right between the two defenders. That's a big play by Page to connect with Clazy, and right off the bat, I, as soon as I, you could see it developing, we'll see if we get a replay oh, yeah. here, but both of them bit on the, on the, short, on the short throw to Faulkner, Clazy just went in, nobody was even close to him. You called it before he even threw the football. It was gonna be Clazy and he made the big catch and there's the big play. Probably, I would say the biggest play of the game. That's the biggest play. We'll see what happens in this last minute and 21 seconds, but you're gonna see it here's right here. Play. Here's Page here and he looks to be throwing. There's, see the little shoulder wiggle there. That freezes the entire defensive secondary and look at him right behind him. And that's, their BC's fortunate that that wasn't a little further ahead of him or Clazy's walking into the end zone. There's an injured BC player. That's Malcolm Fraser down on the ground. And he's being attended to by an assistant coach and the trainer. And this gives Team Alberta an opportunity to go come to the sideline and work a couple of plays on a first and goal. They'll be down at the three yard line as Fraser will pop up and he'll head to the bench. Yeah, Malcolm Fraser's been a big force inside for BC. So you're wondering if maybe Alberta's seen big number 75 coming off the field seen where they are on the field and maybe thinking to themselves pc might be a little vulnerable inside that's where i would be looking because malcolm fraser number 75 for bc obviously yeah. has to come out of this play and i'd be i'd be going right where he was yeah ramirez and east are going to be standing right beside page on a first and goal from the three Page gets the snap, gives it to Ramirez, who tries the left side. Ramirez. Alberta thinks not yes. The referees the, so no. far think no. No call from the official, so BC stops him. That'll be second and goal from about the one. Which, if you're BC, like, I mean, I know obviously you have to try and stop them here, but you, you wonder if they're in the position where they might take a timeout to try and save some time the other way. 107 to go. And if you're Alberta, you're running this down as low as you possibly can, obviously, without taking a time count violation or a delay a game. So you, you got to think if BC gets a stop here on, well, this is third down, so that I think this is third down, isn't it? Second down, second, second down, and goal sorry. from the one. Page under the center. Page is going to take it himself. Left side, Page will get. Should be in there. In the, the end yeah. zone for a touchdown. Big play there. He got enough of a push. He was pushed back afterwards, but big play there. BC still got some time left because I think they do have some timeouts so 43 seconds. I thought they might take a timeout after the first stop there. That allowed Alberta to run another 20 seconds plus off the clock, but BC will get the ball back. They'll have some time here to do some damage. If you're Alberta here, I'm not sure why they are going to go for two, I'm assuming. It looks like they are, yeah. One doesn't do you any good, so if you're Alberta, you're, you're probably thinking two points here. Here comes Page back on the field. Number four and one does One does you no good. Yeah. Only 43 seconds to go. And Page setting up the offense. He's got three receivers to his left side. Clazy lines up in the slot on the left. Empty backfield. Page going to go to the air into the back oh, of the end zone. Oh, no, you had him. Faulkner was there. Incomplete. Faulkner was right there, and the teams practice that timing route and throw into that particular spot all the time. And that one, unfortunately, I think when the coaches review this one, and Faulkner looks to be hurt on the yeah. play. But I think when you're going to see this, Faulkner, 
in golf lingo, he hit a three iron when he should have hit a five iron in my in my books. And that was just too much on a on a rope is what I, where I'm going with that. And if he lay, puts a little bit of air under that one, I think Faulkner comes down with that easily and oh. expands up his lead to three points. He was wide open. Was wide open. And that's a, that is a they're throwing and teams practice like I mentioned where you're throwing to a location, and that was just a little overthrown, too much heat on it, too much of a line drive throw if, in that lingo, but. Yeah, that one might be costly as his. He could have he could have expanded this lead to three points for Alberta. Well, they're going to tend to Falconer, who we don't have a shot of him on the video screen, but he's on his back in the back of the end zone. And there's been a couple of big name players that have been injured. Rate was one of them on the defensive side for Alberta. Thankfully, he came back in. Now Falconer, he's been dynamite offensively and running back kicks, and he went down hard. He dove for the ball, went down hard, and he looked like he grabbed his lower. One, either his right or his left, but one of his lower legs. Yeah, and I wonder if sometimes, like, he left his feet, he came down, and I wonder if he landed on one of his legs and that, that maybe hyperextended something. We don't want to speculate, but yeah. he came down awkwardly. And that you can see that there's concern, obviously, in the from the Alberta Medical. Now they're going to bring him to his feet, which well, they can't. hope that's a good sign for him. We're lining up the kick, but uh, both ref or the referee is saying he's got his hands on his hips standing in midfield saying, hang on, guys, we have an injured player, and they are going to help him off the field now. So we hope he's okay for the next game that Alberta plays, where the, well, we know Thursday, just what time slot. Yeah, it's a quick against. recovery for these guys as they'll be in the ice baths and, yeah. and get in the trainer's room getting some treatment between now and Thursday for sure. And all teams staying at UBC Okanagan and the residents – yeah, they love up it up there. there. I've seen and spoke to a bunch of the teams and the and the players and the and the and the officials and everything just raving about UBC Okanagan and what great hosts they are. So thank you to UBC Okanagan and the great staff and a great venue up there. It's been outstanding. Last minute substitution, as there seems to be some confusion for Team BC as well. Now everybody looks set. Team Alberta ready as well. Referee will finally blow it in. 43 seconds to go. Keen taking his time and now finally will approach the football and here he comes. Surprised by that. That is really surprising. A little chip shot be picked up I'm by not, one of the up men. I'm stunned by that. If you're Alberta, why you don't drive that kick down? You're now, I mean, it worked out okay because BC wasn't able to catch the ball in the air. So maybe he was just trying to pooch it where it went over the first line. But yeah. I'm surprised he didn't hammer that one deep and, and, and force BC to have a longer field because BC, if, that, if they catch that ball, they would have scrimmaged at the 40, 45 yard line quite easily. So it here worked we, out okay though. Yeah, here we go. Sieben, one of the best, if not the best quarterbacks in the province of BC for his age group. Ball is now in his hands. I believe BC's got at least, they're trying to reset the clock here. 44 seconds, yeah. So they're trying to get, a, the officials are trying to get the attention of the timekeepers up here in the broadcast booth or the press box here at the Apple Bowl. Well, they put 42 seconds up on the clock. So Sieben and a shotgun. Here he goes. Sieben. Wow, all sorts of pressure. Sieben is going to lose the football on the, on the sweep coming around on the strip part. Alberta and Alberta has it. And that'll, I mean, coach, I think BC's got some, some timeout still, so they'll be used real quick, but that's a massive play for Alberta. And I was really surprised there because they came with pressure on first down there, which in a one-point game, I, you, your tendency is to sit back. And coaches will always say sometimes prevent prevents you from winning, but that's a big play by, by Team Alberta to get that ball back. I want to see who had the strip for Team Alberta. But they're celebrating on the sideline. It was a great play. Here's the replay. So it's the big man coming from behind. It looked like 98. But who picks the ball up? 99, for? pardon me. 47 comes up with the ball for Team Alberta. It was 97. 97 of 47 came 97 up. 97 comes up with the ball. But that's a big, big We're play for helping out the statistician behind us. <laughs> I was just saying numbers, but it was Rodden 97 who came up with the football, and it was Sama who made the strip from behind. Massive so play there. Now Alberta. Scrimmaging went deep in BC territory. Now you're probably going to hand the ball off and say two hands on the ball and play it safe. BC will use their timeouts, I'm sure, after the ball is 
Ball down. Slice at 34, the running back, who is going to be named just number 30 since he's not on our roster, gets this his first carry of the evening, gets to the 29-yard line. Good run for him. He's, he should be screaming timeout here. They do take one. 32 seconds left, 18, They should 17. have one more, I think, on that one, on, on at least one more for BC, so. But you need a turnover, you know. Yes, you need to stop the clock, yeah. but you need a turnover here. Ideally, you need a turnover here. I mean, BC, even if Alberta hands the ball off, which I'm expecting they would do here, BC would take a timeout. Depending on what happens on third down, let's assume BC stops, and now it's a big play here. Either Alberta might kick the ball or try a long field goal, but. Obviously a massive play coming up here on about second and call it a long four. So after no scoring in the third quarter, Alberta has put up 10 points here in this fourth quarter. None bigger than the one yard touchdown plunge by Josh Page with 43 seconds left. And then the strip fumble and recovery by the defense of Alberta puts them right here in this situation. Now second and five from the 29 yard line. Page and a shotgun. He's got number 30 behind him. Yeah, I would be surprised if number 30 is not carrying this ball. Oh boy, Ooh, high, high snap. High snap, Page brings it down, eludes one tackler, gets to the first down, slides for a first down. So this is gonna be close because depending on where they mark this, so there's an injured BC player on this, but we'll see where they mark this because usually the, what, they're, what they're supposed to, that's one of the rare times we've seen Page slide, but I think they're gonna mark him short because it's where the slide happens. Okay, then so he will be short, yeah. So he probably will be marked a little bit short. So now you've got decision time if you're Team Alberta. BC will have an injury, they have an injury on the play. They will use their time out here. So now you've got decision time if you're Alberta. I, I think where you are in the field, you go. You put enough faith in your offensive line, yeah. put enough faith in, pay, faith in Page. You don't want to try a long field goal in case it gets blocked, or, or if, if you miss it, BC has somebody that lots of talent that can return that kick. So. If I'm Alberta, if I'm on the Alberta coaching staff, I'm, I'm saying, guys, let's go get this one yard and and, and we'll, we'll go home with a victory. Rocco Williams, the Kelowna kid, is the injured BC team player. And he is being helped up. Well, he's at least sitting now. He was face down on the grass, motionless for a few moments, which was a kind of a scary scene. But then he flipped over to his stomach and now he's sitting up, the training staff and one of the assistant coaches out there dealing with Rocco and he's going to be helped up and he looks like he's okay which is great news and he'll be walking off under his own power that's great to see for Rocco so Paige after getting a word with the coaching now, staff on the Alberta side will come I'm assuming BC has called their timeout I haven't seen a signal from the referees so as soon as Rocco comes off the field here I think they're going to blow this play in unless BC so Alberta could take 20 seconds off the clock from unless BC did mm -hmm. call a timeout. Because the referee's got his hand in the air, so we'll see. So if you're Alberta, take 20 seconds. Sure. Don't snap it. And that's what Paige is doing. Why BC didn't call a timeout here, I'm not sure. Do they have any? They must. I, I don't think they haven't. I, they used one on the previous play, but. The time is ticking. Paige watching that clock. He goes up under the center, and he will take the snap, go off the right side, and work his way for a first down, and that should do it. That's the only thing I could think of is if BC used the timeout earlier in the third quarter, because otherwise there's no reason why you wouldn't use one there. Yeah. But BC bench is not trying to call one, so that must be they're out of those timeouts. So Alberta will move on and play what we believe is Team Saskatchewan. We were handed a note that they'd be playing Team Quebec, but that doesn't make sense according to the bracket. So Alberta will play Saskatchewan, and we think. Unofficially, unofficially, uh, unofficially. And BC will play New Brunswick. Obviously, we'll, we'll, we'll confirm that. And, and sure. please check on the Football Canada social media, and Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and all that kind of stuff because that will have the schedule up. But from what we can tell, it looks like Alberta and Saskatchewan and BC and New Brunswick. But that is unofficial. And we have three days to figure it out. Yes. So we should be able, even so a couple of dudes if, up if, here if should figure wrong, that out. Or either any of the teams going to hold that against us <laughs> oh, and say, I hope Waters and McLaren said it's going to be this, so that's who we're playing. I really hope not. Yeah, I really hope yeah, not. That's right. This I'll, is I'll, I'll say it was all you. Because if that's of the case. two guys up there, this is... <laughs> You see the Muppets, those two old guys? Yes. Up there? Yeah, that's us up I'm here. just going to point directly to you and back that <laughs> out of that scene. So, Well, congratulations to Team Alberta getting the 18-17 victory over Team BC. It was a, obviously the best game, in our opinion, of 
the first day of the Canada Cup with three other shutouts. But the game here this evening, the fans retreated to a dandy game between BC in Alberta. Here is the scoring summary again. Sieben with a one-yard touchdown scamper. 14 BC to open up the score and make it at 7-0 with 131 to go in the first quarter. Then Alberta gets a conceded safety. 838, uh, 835, pardon me, of the second quarter made it 7-2. Then they get their first touchdown, a five-yard touchdown run by quarterback Josh Page with 3.38 to go in the first half, made it 9-7. Then Noah Brennan, a 26-yard pass reception for a touchdown with 35 seconds to go before halftime, made it 14-9, and that was the score at the half, 14-9. No scoring in the third. Then James Keane, the kicker for Alberta, 13-yard field goal with 11.01 to go, made it 14-12 BC. Then Marcus Jones gave BC a bit of a, more of a lead at 2.14 of the fourth quarter, made it 17-12, a 25-yard kick. And then Josh Page, a one-yard touchdown plunge with 43 seconds to go, made it 18-17. And the defense as well with that strip, fumble, and recovery gave Alberta the ball and really the victory. But a, a good game here today, I thought. Really good game. It was back and forth. It's what, what we expected as far as closeness. I expected a really close game. I, I said to a couple of people, I said, I think this is within seven points either way. BC could win, Alberta could win, but yeah. it, it, it's what I expected. And these are these are physical teams, they're good teams, they're well-coached teams. Obviously, Alberta will be moving on to play in medal games. BC, unfortunately, will not be. And that's tough. It's You're in. You're at your home park. You're, you're in, a, in a, the primetime game at 7 o'clock here with the opening ceremonies mm -hmm. and so on. So it's tough because now you have to get yourself prepared to play to play for basically now the highest they can finish is fifth place. So that's where BC can finish right. if they win their next two games. But... It's hard when you have metal aspirations, but unfortunately in games like this between two good football teams, someone's going to come out on the on the short end of the stick, and tonight it was BC. Kudos to Alberta for the victory. They're going to announce the players of the game. Offensively, I, I like Josh Page. I, I think I so. Uh, to me, he was... I, I think he was just a leader. I think he was an example. So, I mean, he, he to me, he was... Uh, he was the driving force by Alberta. Clazy was very, very good. Obviously made that big catch at the end of the game as well. Mm -hmm. But Page would be my, uh, either one of them, I don't think you can go wrong with if you're Alberta. And now, and here's the, the announcement. Most valuable defensive player of the game award for Team BC is number 77, defensive yeah, lineman. He, yeah, he made a couple Sutton. really good plays, made a big Sutton stack on great. third down. So yeah. very deserving. I thought the entire of BC, as you'll see, they're giving out the award here. We're Les Weiss from the Okanagan Sun coming out. But I thought their def the BC's entire defensive front played very well today. And, and certainly big number 77, Malcolm, uh, number 75. I thought he was yeah. he was a force inside. So BC and now can't, the winner can't cast the me, please, besides that one play on, on defense where they had a breakdown. BC is number five, quarterback Owen Seaman. Owen Seaman is the offensive player of the game for BC. I don't have final stats on him, but he's named the player of the game. I don't know if the, the offense did much. I mean, the defense was really good. Yeah, for he had the one interception early, but other than that, I thought he settled down. No, with the fumble the at the end, of obviously, the most costly, but Owen Seaman's a heck of a player. He's got a bright future. Oh, yeah. defensive back, number 27, Thomas Moenda. Moenda was good. Yeah, defensive I thought back. him or Rattay, 44, Rattay, yeah. would, have been, would have been a my choice there, but... Both deserving winners there for Team Alberta. And defensively, they, they bent they bent a couple times but didn't break. So they played well on the defensive side of the ball. I got his picture taken there with, as you mentioned, Les Weiss, the president of the Okanagan Sun of the Junior League. And then the offensive player. And now the winner of the most valuable offensive player of the CF4 game right. award it's gotta for be Team one of the Alberta it's gotta be is <laughs> quarterback there you number four. We don't get Josh. a vote. No, hey. they don't. They don't care. No. they don't care what we say up here. <laughs> to the two Muppets. Car here. Carter Page, like I say, he was. I swear, every time he was tackled, he was going forward, and that's yeah. he just he just showed a lot of heart and fought for every yard he possibly could. Even if his arm, he had a couple tough throws, but when he wasn't working, his arm wasn't working the way he liked, it was his legs that were doing the job. So yeah. congratulations to him on the offensive player of the game for Team Alberta. All right, for the final time here at the Apple Bowl for Football Canada Cup, 18-17 the final, Alberta over BC. Players get a few days rest, and they'll be back here at the Apple Bowl on Thursday, 10 a.m., 1 p.m., 4 p.m., and 7 p.m. are the game times on Thursday. On behalf of Tyler McLaren and everybody here at the Apple Bowl, my name is Ryan Waters. Thanks for joining us. So long from Kelowna.